All right, we're live. How's everyone doing? How are you doing? Oh, you know, the wife has uh, the illness that shall not be named. Yeah, yeah, which, let's not name that. Which, which prevents me from going in to, uh, to see my mother. Oh, man. How's she doing? I don't, I don't yeah. know. They, they broke her cell phone. It, oh. It's it's just meant for, like I I have to figure out a way of getting her a new cell phone. That sounds like a convenient accident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate uh, convenient accidents. <laughs> but so we got Philly fixed and Robert G in the house. How's everyone doing? Yeah, hey guys, glad to have you here. We appreciate you being here. Uh, uh, as far as I know, Robert's going to be doing this every Thursday. Yeah. Oh, uh, that is the plan. Yeah. All right. And Joshua Wilson, here you are. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you, brother. How's it going? Uh, so kind of run us through what, what's going on tonight. All right. This is the game plan. Fred. We, uh, let's see if we can pan this camera around. So Fred Smith. Yabba dabba do, baby. You, you can see as an electrician, my beautiful extension cord. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> um, we are going to... Uh, <laughs> Hopefully like this play. one, what? like the, like that one that's single handedly keeping my computer running. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, so bad. So, so the plan here is uh, we're gonna install a box, um, four square, All right. around here somewhere for a receptacle. We are actually gonna install. Uh, Sorry, it might get loud in here. Hi, Baki. Hi, Jonathan Sherwood. Glad to have y'all here. We've uh, actually got a Twitch slash, well, the stupid price tag's in the way, a Switch slash uh, GSCI or receptacle industrial cover here. This is a proper thing to install. Somebody called me out in my short for my uh, for my occupancy sensor. And it was like, <laughs> oh, I see you. <laughs> it's like, I see you uh, calling people to work out all the time and, and you have a mud ring. On your on your occupancy sensor, I was like, "Ah, oh, damn, he got me." <laughs> what, do you, what do you say to that? You know, when so, you're right, you're right. That's what yeah, you gotta when say. You're right, you're right. Exactly. Um, you'll notice here this has round edges. This is the first thing I wanted to point out to you guys before. I Hi, Ted. You see, this has round edges here. Yes. Um, some four squares. I've probably the worst I've ever cut myself in my life. Um. I don't want to tell you too gross of a story, but I cut myself super bad. Uh, I was feeding feeding some number tens into a box that uh, was size too small. It was it was one of my first jobs as a journeyman, and uh, we definitely could have had something different going on. And it was solid wire, and we had we had uh, eleven number tens, which isn't terrible mm -hmm. uh, going into. And I was, I was feeding like this. And the corner of my finger right here just nicked the edge of this box where you're feeding in. And, man, it got me good, to say the least. Uh, they make these in different styles. You see here, this one's kind of sharp and pointy. Yeah. And then this one is rounded. Now, typically, rounded. I don't like rounded boxes. But in this case, whenever they're on your shop wall, you you almost have to have a rounded box. The, different, the difference of me doing this... And me doing this is that I'm not going to freaking do that. My arm will be gone. Like this is underestimatingly sharp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so are you, you're you're just going to leave it out, not not recessed. Yeah. No, no, we're not going to recess these. That's why we're going to be running conduit. So. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just making sure that so that when we have a we have the setup, people have the proper expectation. Hello, Ed, the old tech guy in the house. Everybody should go check out Ed, the old tech guy. Great channel. Better person. And yeah. Ted Robinson, I, I don't know if I said hello to you, but I want to make sure I do. Hi, Ted. Of course that happens. Right there. There we go. This is a Uline box I was telling you about. I saw that somebody had in the back of their service van, and I wanted one, and I got one. And you can see this thing is super heavy duty. And it makes a really nice stool. The rubber feet are almost flush on the bottom. If I could ever get that in frame right there. Really nice. And it might even hold tools with souls. Oh, hey, let, let's not even try. That's too much. That's too much weight to ask. 
what's going on big dog glad to have you here thank you and uh joshua yeah he does every live stream he talks about that silly box <laughs> box to me, Hey, we're it, actually getting to use a, it this time. We're getting to use it, it. It's a footstool with storage. It's a footstool with storage. There you go. There you have it. All right. That's the receptacle that we are going to be running towards. Now, there's two ways we can do this. I think I'm still going to liven it up for you guys on stream. We should be able to get done with this fairly quickly. Um, we're going to do all the wiring. We're going to actually have a receptacle here with the switch and then this switch is gonna be able to turn the receptacle on and off that when we're doing more testing and videos for you guys we can safely shut that on and off and then we're gonna have another box with another switch that's gonna control the receptacles on the ceiling that way we can um have a light switch for our for our lights that plug in so we're doing two switches two receptacles and we'll probably end up with another one down here at some point, if we don't tie it all the way in, we're going to hook this up to, uh, I've got an Eco River, which is a pretty much just a portable battery bank that you can charge off a of solar or whatever. And um, it, it, it's got 120 volts out. So we'll just plug them in and I'll show you how everything works uh, to, to verify and do all that stuff. Uh, keep in mind, it doesn't have a neutral. So the, the ground is a neutral. It's like a floating kind of its own thing so yep. uh, the gscis are going to read open ground probably but uh that is actually why you install a gsi receptacle you have to install a gsi receptacle so if you do not have equipment grounds at your house you have to install a gsi receptacle or you have to install a non-grounding type receptacle and a lot of misconception would be would be that nice comment ed and Adam Brewer can, in the house. Thank you for being here, Adam. Uh, common misconception, you can line and load these. So you see where that's got tape around it. This is the load side. So what happens is you got a receptacle here. You got one behind a fridge because these have to be installed in a readily accessible location. You can't put them behind fridges. can't put them behind dishwashers. can't put them behind anything like that. These have to be readily accessible. On this little fine print right here, it says test monthly. So what happens if this is not able to get tested monthly, the first thing the lawyer is going to do when there's an incident, he's going to look in the back of his book, get his magnifying glass out and see that that says test monthly. And then you're done. There's there's no reason for having these in an unreadily accessible location. It means they weren't getting tested and you're getting sued. So yep. these have to be in a readily accessible location. And it's common to use the load side of this so you can have GSCI protection downstream. Now, when you don't have equipment grounds in your house, you don't have that choice. You have to install one of these at every location. You cannot simply load all of your plugs. This has to be everywhere, and that gets expensive. So that's what it is. My, my question to you is, 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 does the same hold true for an AFI? So that's another story. Okay, AFCI is arc fall circuit Sorry. interruption. And essentially what they do in a circuit is you got the hot and the neutral um, that – you have CTs, which are current transformers, and they're checking the amperage of the incoming wires, and they're checking the amperage of the outgoing wires, being the incoming being the hot, and the outgoing being the neutral. And that's just the simplest way I can explain it. It's not exactly like that, but that's the best way. You got one amp coming in the, the black wire, one amp going out of the white. Everything's yep. cool. What happens is sometimes you are sharing circuits, you're sharing neutrals, which means that you had a light in the laundry room that only the neutral was tied to. So the hot came from a different source. Now you've all of a sudden got an extra amp on your white wire. So we had one amp coming in on our black. All of a sudden you turn on the light in your laundry room. Now you got two amps on your white and we're going to trip. So that's where arc fault also does that. So they sense loose connections, but they also detect irregularly uh, irregularities with, um, with your current coming in and out. And that's what GSCI does. It trips in yep. 0.6 milli milliamps. Sorry. Milliamps. And um, so AFCIs are a little bit different. AFCIs have to be installed at the circuit breaker. There's very little exception for that. Um, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. It's it's very tricky to use an AFCI and use it on the load side, like we explained here, simply because your AFCIs are not listed in conjunction for use with squirty 
Eaton Cutler Hammer, GE, anything like that. They got to be listed for the purpose. If Eaton gave you permission um, for Leviton, for example, to uh, test, because these are tested with fuses, not other manufacturers' breakers. Mm -hmm. So your AFCIs are tested without the, the whole assembly, I guess you would say. Um, Square D is making money on their AFCI breakers. They're not going to give Leviton permission to test with their breakers because now you don't have to buy a squirty breaker. Right. So the the long story short of that is um, you cannot use these to achieve protection for your whole house, for that whole circuit. It's only good for whatever appliance is plugged into that. So, for example, if you are on the line side of this, forget about the load. We're on the line side only and you got a fridge plugged in. The fridge has something wrong with it. It's going to detect the appliance only on on this side only you're not gonna be able to protect anything downstream it's not tested for that it's not proven for it you can't do it quite simply yeah. but that's that's the best explanation for that yeah so uh, in my garage because now now my house is interesting uh the the main part of the house was built in 1904 i uh, got updated in 1946 so down in my basement i still have some knob and tube yeah Right. And I'll, I'll eventually just replace the whole thing and, and go through it. Now, the garage was built in 1996. But uh, there is like none of the breakers are, are marked. And I don't know where the line connection is because where they connected everything from the house to the garage is right next to the knob and tube. <laughs> so, no. Yeah. So you don't have any grounds in your house, hardly. Right. So I yeah. actually put in an AFCI breaker or an AFCI receptacle uh, yeah. out here just to protect myself because none of my like none of my uh, receptacles in my garage or in my house are connected together. They're all wired individually. It's a huge pain in the butt. Yeah. I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That that sounds like a nightmare. So that, uh, that's Josh why I went. Says, Love when the inspector calls for GSCI breakers on the jacuzzi sub panel, but the pumps don't have a neutral. Then he complains that the GSCI breakers don't actually work. Um, yeah. So in, in that circumstance, just like when you have an open ground, um, you're not able to physically test the GSCIs. Um, but you you still have the protection where they're they're monitoring the difference on the milliamps um, to to where you're getting it. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, trying to, I I am trying to get my uh, fog machine to work. I, nice. It's my first time with a fog machine. Let's 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 get to bending something. We're gonna do a back to back ninety here. Um, Yeah, that should work. We're just going to go. Uh, we're hopefully going to just kind of go up against this wall. Does anybody know anything Flat about fog the machines? Wall there and then curve and then 90 up. All right. All right you know, we might just go straight. We're, we're, we'll do, we will do a back to back 90. And Adam. Like down. Adam, 90 feet, 30 feet in the air, dude respect what? i do what uh adam he was hanging uh 90 he, he did 90 feet of one inch i hung 90 feet of one inch this afternoon what a pain nice 30 feet in the air makes it tougher yeah yeah that does i i man i got to where uh i didn't just i didn't come off my lift i just stayed up there so like if i was on a boom lift or whatever and my rails were here I would just match the bubble with the uh, with the rail. So your rails. I'm trying to get in frame here, man. This camera doesn't. Should should I should I do the? Go ahead. Yeah. Make yourself bigger. I'm about to get little for the first time. There you go. Yeah. So you got your rail here. Uh, probably it's a JLG, so it's orange and crappy. And uh, you you got your conduit setting yep. here so we're ready to do a 90 here for example um what 
whatever this bubble is right here is what you're going to want to put on your 90 here in case you guys don't know. This isn't directed towards anybody specifically. It sounds like this guy knows what he's doing, Adam Brewer. So um, whatever this bubble is here, you match it here, and then you know you're yeah. 90. Um, I used to run a whole bunch of plaster bond, and I only came down when I had to thread something. And it was almost... It was almost never like only if I ever had to thread something like I would I would try to do like because uh, when we first started we were running on racks but then towards the end of the job they're like oh yeah no we also need this and we got this change order for that we got this and then you're running you're running parakeets and parallel clamps which is something different than uh, like a typical bang on caddy um, a parallel clamp or a parakeet is let's see some four point saddles oh man okay all right. Uh, it pretty much it's just two offsets and then uh you you take your you take your um dude it has been a long time since I did four point so uh you're gonna take your obstruction and uh I'll show you what I like to do I like to take an inch off so it so it kind of cradles it real nice like um let's real see nice if we can life. go over something yeah let's do a four point saddle we can do that let's do that all right because the stream is for you guys. It's not for me wiring my shop. I can do this anytime. If you guys want to see a four-point saddle, we can do it. I think that universally we don't want to see a four-point saddle. I know my my ex-wife always sat on the saddle horn. I don't know if you guys heard that, but that's a great chain. Everything is in the way. I know. It's, it's kind of like you should start putting up away. I don't know. I wasn't planning on doing a full point saddle, sir. There we go. Okay. Ted Robinson said, teach him anything. What's that? Ted Robinson said, teach him anything. Teach me anything. Okay, cool. So, this is going to be our obstruction. And typically, typically there's something stupid that you got to avoid too. So, like, Let's say we want to strap within a certain amount of time because um, something stupid happened, and you gotta you gotta be able to get a strap like right here or something. So let's yeah. say let's say we need to strap it before here, and uh, yeah, we'll just go with that. So let me let me get uh, more equipped here on my tool belt or something. That's a veto bag, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this one's a this one's a veto, but uh, this one here is a. Is that the XL or? Oh, I like the little tough man. Uh, what is yeah. that? The tough. Uh, what do they call that? Tough belt. Tough belt. There you go. I've I've actually I've had this same one since um, 2011, I guess. It's yep. it's uh, it's seen its share of wear and tear. <laughs> It looks good. Yeah, yeah, they're they're not bad. I put down my 16 footer and it disappeared. I know you're not surprised, but it's probably in this box. There it is, in the box. Man, I always ran pipe with a uh, with a 16 footer because <laughs> the, the sticks are only 10 foot long, and the maximum strapping would be uh, our our company. Who I almost said the company's name. Uh, that would have been bad. The, the company they worked for, it they had an eight-foot requirement for strapping. So um, even though you could go 10 feet per code, we always did eight feet for EMT. So uh, let's pan this back up. I need a camera guy. And here goes Google Drive doing something stupid. Hey, if you watched Impact Nation Tools the other day, he had his uh, five-year-old son man in the camera. Yeah. I saw that. Okay. 14 inches. So we want to strap... We, we want to start this bend um, to where we can strap it here. So any, anything after this would be good. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is make it harder. Let's go over something like this. So this is uh, our obstruction is four inches. So just like any saddle, that's it's pretty much two saddles. So that's going to determine. I mean, oh, my God. It's like two off. Uh, a saddle's like two offsets, dude. I'm getting all jacked up. Saddle's like two offsets. So you got the height of your obstruction, and then you got the length. So we got four inches here of height. And then keep in mind, you might want to put a strap here. You might want to put a mini. 
something like that where you can strap it. These are a half inch off of this, uh, whatever mm. dimension that is. So we better call it, we better call it, you know, we better go with five inches just for safety here for streamlines because this box is actually a slightly different height. So we're going to say we need a five inch. You know what? I almost messed up because we're actually going to be going with another strap here. So we want to actually subtract an inch if that makes sense because we're going to be using this strap too. Yeah. So that way everything's nice and uniform. You want to go with the same height. So we're actually going to go with four and a half is what we're going to do. That right. way the pipe sits in here, the pipe sits in there, and then everyone's happy. So your multiplier for 30 inches is two. So all we got to do to make sure we can strap here is make sure we have enough pipe. And then we know we want to start our bend somewhere here. So we're going to go with a, I was looking for my hard hat. I don't know where my hard hat anymore. Um, I had the multipliers in my hard hat at one point. So yeah. Just trust me, a 30 degree is two. Um, 45 is 1.41. 10 is 5.73 or something like that. It's been a long time since I ran pipe, guys. <laughs> but it's like riding a bike, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, here we go. We are going to... We're going to mark this if we can get the camera down here. Yeah. So four and a half is nine. Yeah. So we mark this at nine. Oh my goodness. Make sure we didn't move it. Should be right on the arrow. Yeah, there we go. So we're at nine. You can see that. There you go. That's better. And yep. Here's the mark. If if you're not so good, it helps to make sure you put a mark all the way around because later your conduit will be upside down at some point when you go to do your offset. So you want to make sure that you have your basis checked. And then the next thing we're going to do we know that we had a four inch obstruction. That's how long it was. So we've already got our height, which is four and a half. That's why we got a nine here. And then your obstruction is going to be four inches long. So what we're going to do, we want to make sure that this thing looks nice and clean. And uh, I like to hug my obstructions fairly tight. So we're actually going to go with maybe three and three quarters. Because the bends, the bends tend to uh, raise it. Yeah. You got the radius. You got the radius going on. Yeah. So um, you know we're gonna we're gonna stick with the four, and I'm gonna show you what the difference could have been. So we're gonna stick with the four because that's what someone would typically do. I'm gonna show you how you can make your bends look even better because essentially it's it's uh, a quarter of an inch would be eighth on each side. When you stop and think about it, so yeah. you'd be you'd be a one eighth closer on one side, one eighth on the other. So then we got that's going to be our offset here. That's going to be our obstruction, and then we're going to start with another nine inch mark here, because that's going to be the other offset because it's two offsets back to back. So there's nine there. Hey, can you? All right. I was just going to ask you to get that on camera, sir. Yeah. I'm, uh, Juan Pratt is in the house, and so is Howie Z. Howie Z said that's what she said. Big Dog said after the four point saddle, do a congruent rotation, run parallel to the obtuse cubic amplifier. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. The obtuse cubic amplifier. I'm very familiar with that. Uh huh. And Jose Vidal says, hey, man, great to see you again live. How's it going? <laughs> Just All right. So we're on the arrow. That is the arrow. I think it's funny because I, I bought this bender at Home Depot. And 
somebody already had freaking red marker on it, which means someone was probably doing some conduit running in Home Depot or like just borrowed it for a job or something and then put it back on the shelf after they're done. So I thought that was pretty funny. All right. So uh, another trick for 30 degrees, pretty much if this is level and then this is level, you're pretty much at 30. But I'm going to show you uh, a trick to getting 230. And it's not what you're thinking. It's it's actually, uh, well, you'll just see. All right. Make sure we're still good because I've done some talking. Okay. So here's our first offset. This is our first bend here. Now, uh, watch out, ceiling. Would you say that looks like 30? Let me find 30 for you. 30 is that mark right there. Yes. So if you notice, we're on the 22 line right there uh -huh. on the back, but we're parallel with the 30. Do you see how that pipe? Oh, God. I did it now. Do you see how that pipe is parallel with the 30 line? Yes. If I could stop beating the hell out of my ceiling. That's that's the trick. So you put your pipe parallel with these lines. You don't actually put your pipe on the line. You notice the back of this pipe is actually sitting on the 22. Yes. But we're parallel with the 30. Back in there. Okay, so that's one bend there. Then we're going to go down to the next bend and we're going to roll it. And we're going to do what we call not dog legging it. So uh, that's what they call it. They make things called no dogs. This would be, <coughs> here, that magnet's not messing around. This would be, well, this isn't really a no dog, but they make no dogs for, for hydraulic benders where the whole thing is like, that big, you know? Yeah. And then you can just put on the edge of your pipe and you're guaranteed to be however you are because you just follow the bubble as you go. But um, we're going to look down this pipe and hopefully get this pretty straight. So here comes the other 30. That's it right there. Yeah. Right there. And if we did this right, we should be able to go right over this. And if I don't turn this around, so actually, yeah, that looks pretty darn good, actually. Uh, you can see that. I have not seen the new Top Gun movie. You just have to trust me. It's not dog leg. It's looking real good so far. Yeah. Although the way I'm rolling it looks like it's... <laughs> no, no, it looks good. It looks good. It, it, it is good. You can catch a glimpse of it. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah. Everything's at an angle, so you have to just, we got you. Right. So then our next bend will be right here because that's going to be the obstruction, if you recall. Right here is going to be the next bend. Why is this thing zoomed in? But for now, we're just going to show you right here. How good we're looking. Of course that fell. Here, let me turn this camera up. I'm like the low budget VCG. I can't afford the Milwaukee glasses, but I, I picked up the DeWalt for five bucks. got a little bit of tweaking to do just a little bit down here on this end you can see where it's not completely yeah where it's kind of touching the table there but that's the uh that's the gist of it so far we'll we'll get this um completely good here in a minute i just don't want to lose my spot so then yeah. your next bend goes down like this yeah. and and watching somebody mess this up is one of the funniest things in the world because then you have a pipe that just looks hilarious because it's just the complete wrong way and you got to throw it in the bushes. So, um, yeah, let's see if we can get you a get you a view here. That's our next mark there. That's the four inches. Yep. There. And that's a straight four inches. You don't multiply anything with that because that's your obstruction. Yep. And we want to be right in line with it. It's hard to do with a double astigmatism, I gotta tell you. <laughs> I used to wear contacts. And, and then I got, I got just in time out of construction to uh switch to glasses. The contacts got too heavy for his eyeballs. He could no longer open them. 
Because and then the next bend is here. So we're going to flip this around again like this. And then we're going to bend this down 30 degrees. If we have any room. And then I'm going to show you something because I did, I did dog leg it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's two ways you can look at this. You can, you can line it back up to your original bend mm -hmm. or you can make a completely crooked leg on this side. For me, I like to get three bends straight and then stand on it to get the last one straight versus keep trucking. It just makes sense to me. So we're actually going to bend this, um, with the original bend because we rolled it just a little bit too much, not too bad. Uh, <laughs> earlier, if we can find it, there we go. Okay. That's... So that's your uh, that's your offset there. Yeah. And you'll see here. This is what I wanted to show you. This bend here, even though we did four inches, right? Right here, even though we did four inches, you're going to see the radius here. You're you're going to wind up with a lot more real estate than you think you would. Uh, before I put this down, let me let me double check it. So we got uh, Adam. He's really good at this. I always hated uh, bending pipe. This is another trick. So this kind of pulls your groin though. Like honestly, like you can you can hurt yourself with bigger pipe. Even this pipe. Because you're, well, you're kind of standing sideways and it's weird. But um, for, Fortunately for everybody, your groin is so small, there's not much chance of getting hurt. Yeah, that is a good point. So there's not too much worry there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just going to kind of just tweak this just a little bit. I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, when I was on the job site, this is the, the job I always gave the old guy. Bend in the pipe because I hated it. I, I, with a passion, hate it. Oh, it doesn't even bounce, dude. We're good. So let's get a... Uh... Did you fix your one angle? Because it was at 28 instead of 30. Let me see here. It was what? It looked like it was at 28 instead of 30. I think, I think you're right. We're going to put just a little bit more on everything. Just a little bit. There you go. Out. <laughs> Jeremy said he just gets the flexible conduit. Yeah, I do have some flexible conduit actually. Did you take into it yet? Uh, your, your Rodney Widger in the house. Hey, Rodney, you wanted to see it? I'm not saying a word. You wanted to see it, Rodney. Here it is. Um, and we, yeah. So you can see I put my finger underneath there. My finger's about half an inch right there. Yeah. Uh, so this is where. See, my, remember that obstruction that I was telling you about? If if we had it done like three and three quarters or something, we could have been making that thing look real clean because the bends would have wound up closer here. Yeah. And it it just. I used to always take like you know an inch off because what it does is puts half an inch on either side so that's that's almost a full inch there and that's almost a full inch on this side so you wind up just a nice tight whatever but um yeah that's a 3.7 you can see it doesn't bounce and they both slide and oh, uh yeah it's pretty it's pretty good it looks good and that's still easy enough to run wire through even like that so Great job. Yeah, it's like 360 degrees. So keep in mind, we just did four 30s. That's 120. Yep. So change the dipper on the action figure. I don't know what that means. Thank you, Robert. Sorry, everyone. Just wanted to get a few tips and tricks. the The biggest thing you have to remember, Joshua, is where what those lines on the side of that uh, conduit bender mean uh yeah. get get familiar with that uh i always like for the new people i always suggested taking 
uh, a couple of pieces and practicing off to the side. Yeah, you, you can see how straight that is now. Yeah. Practice off to the side just to get familiar with your with your bender. But uh, yeah. I I hated I hated doing it. So. <laughs> Oh man, I loved running bike, dude. Loved it. Oh, I'm I'm sure you do. Every you night. Yeah, you know, a lot of people. I think I think that's probably what what helped me out so much, man. Uh, you know, a lot of people. There's there's different highs and stuff. People get high on different substances and stuff. Um, you know, one of my highs is helping people out or doing a really really good job. And and I'd always just try to you know just bust every day that much better than last and and we would make a game out of it and we'd race each other and uh it just motivate you know and uh i feel like that's gone nowadays yeah uh, i think well so i i i will say this um once once we got big enough we just got one we got a uh, a bender that was automatic so we just took all the the math all the the anxiety out of it but when we still when we had new people do you have a po box no i only have my regular box um but when we had new people we always taught them how to do it by hand before we would let them try to do it with the w with the automatic but uh the automatic was just too easy so we got well, we got thirty something minutes, maybe, maybe, maybe an hour at the most. I don't want to keep you guys all night. We're gonna we're gonna bust this CNC out. Bender, right yeah. So uh, yeah, just first thing we're gonna do without getting in the way of the camera, we're gonna get a measurement <laughs> back here. My box is named Betty. <laughs> Souls lives in his mom's basement. So anytime uh, after 26, okay. we can pretty much 90 up. Um, the stub for this bender is five inches, which means that if we put the bender, if we want to bend at 27, we put the bender back here at 21, we would wind up with our back of our 90 right there at 27. Um, but we don't want 27. We want like, I want this box pretty much where this extension cord is. So we're going to go... And, and this is a trick you're running pipe fast. Um, don't don't sweat the small stuff. If, if you're doing a rack and you're trying to do symmetrical bends, all, all you got to do is do the same band. And then it, it'll work itself out because all the spacing is the exact same. The only thing you got to worry about is as you get further away, your conduit shrinks. And then you just chop all your lines straight, put couplings back on, and you keep trucking. But for the most part, like if we did, if we did two offsets here like this, I've also, I've, man, ever since this came out, this is the original. This is the OG. Look, I put this mini strap on here years ago before anyone ever had a freaking hook. Look how beaten the hell that thing is. Did so you say is mini strap hook. on? Yeah. And uh, I think I changed the blade on this maybe 20 times since I've owned it. And uh, this is a testament to good tools. Mm -hmm. Do I want to cut this, man? This thing's kind of cool. It's entirely up to you. Me it's pretty cool. It says silver slick right in the middle. Like it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like right there. I was gonna show you the uh the, the offsets, but I've got I've got some other scrap in here. Hang on. He really likes his offset nipples. That's what happens when they're the boobs are two different sizes. I'm just Look, saying. we'll just bend another one for you guys real quick. So we'll go we'll go 45 just to exaggerate it. And, uh, yeah, we'll go 45. Oh, this is going to be terrible. 45 right there. Got to just, just a little bit. Yeah, that looks, that looks good enough to, uh, display. And then we need another one. So, I caught it. Uh, a normal thing here on Tools and Tactics is watching him drop stuff and get hit. By stuff. Or get hit by stuff. He enjoys that stuff. This might be...
hold up because I, I completely forgot <laughs> what we we're gonna do there. Forty five, sir. Oh no, I know. I just I gotta get this back. Forgot to mark it. Yeah, that, that's gonna be impossible. All right, here we go. All right. Oh. Mm. Once you bend it so much, then you can put it on the floor and turn it down. <laughs> See that? Yeah, yeah. Then it's not so impossible. And then once this handle goes to about there, or really what you're doing is you're making this level. So once once you get this, is what the levels were, but I. We almost never used a level until I was trying to make something look pretty. Right here, this is uh once we get that level, which is perfectly level right now, by the way, so I don't want to bend any more on it. Uh, maybe a little bit more. You got what you call spring tension, so once you take the weight off it, it'll bounce back a little bit. But uh, <laughs> so you can see right on top of each other. Juan, what do you know about insurance? Since you're right on top of each other. Oh, right here. There you go. So there's your bends there. Uh, right there like that. They're a little bit off. Just a little bit. Nothing's shaking. Yeah, you probably shouldn't have. I, I just need to move my camera. It's going to be a long night if I don't. So it's just a tad off there. It's a little offset, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, Not too fine. bad. Once, once you put these next to each other and they're in a rack like this, that's that's how they are. So you, you don't have to try to figure out exactly on how you're going to line these couplings up. You just you just blow and go. Once you get this like this, you would take this line right here. This is your shortest one. And are you laughing about blow and go? You, no, you cut this one flush and then you'd have, you'd have level couplings and then vice versa on the back side. You yeah. know, once you cut that, you just cut that. And you keep trucking, just always work with your the shortest one. So you always want to run your inside conduit first because that's going to be your shortest one. Then everything else is longer, and then you can cut all your couplings to match the same length. I uh, no, I was I was laughing at the comments. I'm just reading oh, okay. the, the comments, sir. We're gonna go. We're gonna bend into. Uh, let's go. Let's do this. Let's do 37. Um, it's probably you like 32. A, you're doing a 90 at 37. Well, in this case, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're actually in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, eight, 43. Yeah. We're going to do a 90 at 43. <laughs> and you'll see why in a second. Um, it's on camera. Yeah, good enough. Yeah, it's. I mean, okay. we can't see the line because of the light, but it's good. Cool. And I think we all trust you by this by this time. Yeah. Before I bend this, let me think about this. No, because I'd have to turn my conduit around to get this bend. Uh, let me double check something for your bend real quick. Robert, I know this part on IS. Have it and not answer the phones. I don't know what you mean, Juan. We need the long side to be in the vendor. Like, did I already flip it? I think I flipped it and then, uh, ha! <laughs> yeah, right there. Long side, like I say. Because you, you don't want your deduct to wind up on the wrong side. So if you're talking to a chat, and you forget what you're doing, you're going to wind up with stupidity. So I could put this on the floor, but there's not enough room on the floor. So I'm just going to bend the whole thing overhand. <laughs> then we'll put it on the floor. Okay. 
and the floor's level, which is amazing in this house. And then we're, we're going to line that with this. This condo should be right, hopefully, where this cord is flat against the wall after we do our last bend. So we've accounted for a stub. That way we can turn back that way. So we want to... But do we have to trust him? No. No. Do roll this down like this. Camera. 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 Yeah, we can only see the tops here. Well, you're about to see the bottom. I like to see the bendy parts. I'm trying to make sure it's bending right. Yes, it's bending right. But I don't know if I dogged it or not. But a back to back nine is easy to dog. Or easy to undog. Get over there. All right. Probably as much as I'm going to do on that. So now we got a thing that doesn't fit on camera. Now, we got a, a back to back 90. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're good. You can see. Cool. So now we're 90 on the wall. Wait, where our extension cord was? There we go. And then we just got to finish getting everything all lined up. But yeah, we're perfectly on our wall. I don't know how you're going to see that. But uh, yeah, once we make sure this is 90 and then this is 90, we can. Dude, this magnet is seriously good. Well, it's a climb. So, to, to, so we don't, so we know we didn't dog it. You lay that flat. Yeah. And then if this table is level, which it's not, we would want to. So that's where the bubble is, which you can't see. It It's on the floor. That's where the bubble is. It's on the floor yeah. now. Don't forget your box offset. So I've got minis. Um, I could do a box offset <laughs> if you want me to, but I really want to be able to put my box on as soon as possible. Um, Every guy says the same thing. We, we could do a box offset, I suppose, if that's what you want to do. Um, <laughs> what we'll do, just for the stream, we'll cut this off. I'll do a box offset on it, and then we'll mount the box right here on the wall. Or we okay. can keep going. I say what just keep know? going. I, I don't need Keep going. I hear keep going. Uh, uh, Joshua Wilson said, what is right is right. Uh, Darren wants to know if you're going to be using a hammer. Uh, everything's a hammer. When we start tightening the lock rings, yes, we'll be using a client hammer. That has uh, <laughs> a multifunction fine <dog>. hammer. <laughs> and uh, Howie Z said, My wife doesn't let me go on benders anymore. She got sick of me buying clothes or new clothes. Tequila makes my clothes fall off. <laughs> uh, P Good wants to see you run one and a quarter. One and one quarter, sorry. One and I one don't quarter. have an inch and a quarter. I don't have an inch and a quarter bender either. But um, would and one Jose inch said, help? Keep going. Hang on, What's let that? me cut this. What? Go ahead. I said with one inch plaster bond count. Hang on. Sure. P good. Uh doesn't look like the no cutting is gonna That's the uh, conduit reamer there. And it's got the set screw uh grabber thing. Um, <laughs> so these set screw connectors, this thing just sits right on top of them real nice so they can't wander around and it's effortless to stay on the screw. Uh, I use this one though. 
more than anything. This is my beating screwdriver, chisel, hammer, reamer, all of the above. There's Plug. the beating portion of it. Um, you know, say what you will about these tools, dude. I, you can see, like, this thing's probably a quarter of an inch shorter than when I bought it. I've grinded yeah. it down. It doesn't even fit on a screw anymore, except for these set screws. And, um, dude, these things, these things take a hit. Like, they really do. You can really, really wail on these. Um, yeah. Hey, Klein makes a fantastic product. I don't think anybody's going to argue with you. So there's the, uh, Hello, Jeremy Nguyen. Glad to have you here. There's the reaming there. And just to uh, save you some typing, we're both doing fine. Uh, our next videos will be out with it. We, we do videos every day. And uh, I don't know if we're going to do anything outdoor power equipment related. <laughs> uh, savage. <laughs> you want me to buy him the ten dollar craftsman wall hanging kit you that I saw on my deal video today? Uh, I I bet you he probably has a real hammer hanging around there. Uh, uh actually, oh, I do. I do have a real hammer uh, right here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, oh, and it's one. a husky. <laughs> I like this hammer. I like this hammer a lot. I'm just going to say somebody the 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 trouble of typing this one too. You need a stiletto. Stiletto makes the best hammer, and any other hammer is just inferior. So if it's not a stiletto, it ain't. Yeah, good. let me let me go spend. <laughs> Hang on a second. We're gonna. I'm gonna put this strap. No, sorry. I pause on yeah. this pipe. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna put no the strap can, on the pipe. No way I can leave it wow. against the wall. Well, because that's that's just we're gonna, a we're gonna tighten this later. So now I've got my offset. So whenever I install this, I'm done. I don't have to worry about trying to float this half an inch off of this wall. The strap's already on it. And uh yeah, so that's why we installed this strap now because it's just a spacer. Oh, the craftsman hammer was it was a stud finder, a tape measure a level and a hammer so it was a four like four tools for 10 bucks at lowe's today you all my if you haven't watched the deal videos that i make you're 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 missing out that's all i'm gonna say i probably make too many of them so i'm actually really happy about this oh darren Porsche says that east wing makes the best hammers jeremy says stilettos are nice but not for electricians have you guys seen the new i don't know if they're new anymore the bosch uh, no. not bosch hammers what the f uh help me out singer not singer spider spider, spider the blue Let's see yes. how good the magnet is. Look at this. The magnet actually works. <laughs> let's put, okay, let's put a flex on it real quick. Put a flex on it. All right, so in case you're wondering, like this is hands down, like my favorite bit. Pivots, uh, if you're installing a fan or something, you already know how pain those screws can be. Yeah. This puts it about 30 degrees and gives you that advantage. Um, this thing is super magnetic, but except for with flex bits. Let's see, we got, how many can we carry? We got four. That's what I want. Oh, we got one. Hang on. We're doing signs here. Oh, we got, we got. We got two. Maybe I should put this drill out of my hand. The, these little fingers here, right here, I, I forget things they're holding here from doing trade work for so long that they just disappear. And then when I do a video, I watch. Nice. I look back and I watch. I'm like, why am I still holding this stuff? Like, I forget that they're in these fingers here. Um, let's see if we can get another one. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I can't do it. It's not going to do it. 
Let's try up here. Oh, okay, we got three. Let's let's see what the uh, let's see what the spiders got. Here's four with ease. Look at that. Look at that. Not even trying, dude. Isn't that crazy? That is kind of crazy. Well, I had to shake it, but uh, that's still three. Let's see if we can get more. And this is on the tip. Like, it's on the tip, not the... Uh... <laughs> Y'all read my mind. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That's crazy, man. Why? Why did they have to do that? It's got to be the coating or something. Here's a Makita Gold. Now, this is a PH1, so it's got even less real estate. But the PH1, man, look at that. Easy with ease. And you go back to a flex. I'm using a lot of screws here. You go back to the flex. And y'all know I like flex, but I mean, come on. Look at this. Oh, we got three. No, we didn't. <laughs> I thought we had it. Bridget sent me an email a couple of hours ago about a new Labor Day weekend sale. Uh, I have not, I, I have not. Oh, yes, I did. Ninety nine dollar Labor Day sale. We from almost Bridget. had four. The point is, they're just not. They're just not as magnet magnetic, which might not be a big deal to you, but I'm really glad that these things. I can just reach in here like this, all rough like. And pull out a hundred of them. Like that's that's what I like to do. That looked like six. Well, it was a hundred. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lion motherfucker. <laughs> but so so you're all happy with the spider magnet. It, yeah, I'm happy with the spider bit so far. I don't know about the durability, but I'm glad that they are more <laughs> magnetic with the latest thing that came out. I'm making the rigid too hot. And told the best hammer for electricians are uh, Klein Lyman's pliers. Yeah. That's probably true, to be honest with you. Do we need to... Um... The nice thing about S-Wing is that they are made in America, so... That... I think the Milwaukee hammers are going to be made in America. I know a lot of their hand tools are. Awesome. Rodney, you're killing me. I love you. No. I'm about to fix that. <laughs> it's got a gap back here. That's the whole point in putting this conduit here. Is so I have a reason so things can't fall back behind me. <laughs> I, I I mentioned taking a uh, uh, the the kicker plate for the bottom of your like industrial or, or commercial buildings, and putting it along that table top so that nothing falls back there. Yeah. And All right. So that was our hammer. Space. It's got a beat, and I can dance to it. <laughs> okay, so those uh, those ninety nine dollar deals for rigid are the exact same ninety nine dollar deals that they have been running for the last uh, month or so. So it's on the oscillating tool, the three panel light, the jigsaw, the trim router, and the incredible six amp hour max output battery. Uh, Darren, I think he enjoys the vibration. So you had a beef with solar, didn't you? I don't What's have a beef with solar. I don't really have a beef with solar. It's just the truth about solar is, is that it doesn't pay, but that's not what I, I was going to show folks like how you would, uh, align on a roof, how you would align solar uh like just a quick step but you finish what you're doing first i like the knockout by the way i heard milwaukee yeah. screwdrivers and pliers are going to be made in america 
but they're going to have two sets, Taiwan and American made ones. Yeah, it sounds like everywhere, everyone else that slaps a Made in America sticker on most, something. Most just, of your work as an electrician is, is just strapping and, and making a rack for your next piece of pipe. Like, it's, it's, it's just the next step. So this pipe is obviously too long when you get a measurement on. And uh, I'll show you a trick to get an offset here in a second. All right. But, um, we're just going to take this piece of trash here. We're going to stick it in this hole. We want to be strapped within three feet where we leave a box. We'll get a, we'll get a line right here. Move that out of the way so you can see that. Oh, you can't see anything because we zoomed out of the camera. There we go. We did it. There we go there. And then you want to make a line where you're going to put your strap. And now I can put my strap there. And then when we get our piece of conduit that we're done with, we already have a strap, so we're ready to go. Because what's going to happen is you wind up with a 90 over your head that's awkward and it's ready to fall in a certain direction because you're putting it on the ceiling. Yeah. And now you don't have to worry about trying to balance this and hold this here and get this level while you got something teetering on you. You just work smarter and plan your route and know that you're going to need a strap here. So go ahead and do that now versus later. Yeah. Also, laser line levels are like the best thing for this. Everyone's like, ah, you don't need to set that up. You don't need this. It's like, it depends how you, if you know how to use your tools, they, they work for you. And you know, more ways than one. You, I could do, I could do three and four is five and do Pythagorean theorem and figure out where my straight line is off of these two walls and then go do it down there and then adjust to an eighth and then figure out one straight line for the whole building when I only yeah. have two walls to play with. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you guys are interested in seeing how someone would like my, I was literally just going to take a picture off the internet or have you guys suggest a picture of a home off of the internet. And I was going to show you guys how to lay the, the uh, array out on the roof for maximum efficiency. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. I, I don't think anybody's ever done that. But I, I have the knowledge. Um, Hey, I want to know, are you going to add another box up top? Yeah, so this one's going to be a switch and a plug. Yeah. And um, the plug's going to be constantly hot. And the switch is going to control the plug that's going up here. Yep. And then in this stream or another stream, add another box right here with the switch and a plug. And then this plug would be switched hot. Okay. Are you going to have an overload switch off of one of them? Uh, no, I'm just going to do just a standard switch and use overloads with all my gadgets that I got. Okay. Uh, just check it. Just check it. So a good way to tighten this would be with your clients or hammer. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Honestly, I don't know if I've ever used a hammer on a four square in all of my years. Um, and I don't think I, I want to start now. That might be I weird. I don't think I have either. I, but, I, I, I've used a, a screwdriver. You can over tighten it there. <laughs> And then typically what you do, you grab your channel locks. These aren't channel locks. You would grab your no, channel locks. An angle. You grab your channel locks, uh, whatever you want to call them, connect X. Uh, they're all channel locks. They're channel. slip joint pliers, sir. Get it you right or else the internet will be mad. The internet like will be mad at you. Through yeah. straight. Not out. Yet. Now, if we want to do an offset, I'll show you something real quick. If we want to do an offset. Americans used to be able to think outside the box and solve problems. What happened to that? What happened to that is our schools started teaching people to think alike. Uh -oh. Not even think. They just Here comes uh, the demonetization. They just taught people to. <laughs> Here it goes. They, they just taught people to do things the same way. Uh, if you, uh, I, I used to, uh, when, I, when I was in school, I always got books pre-1963. My favorite book was a math book from 1927 that was given to eighth graders and it had calculus in it. And you get kids in college now that can't do calculus. All but right, I was a tutor in school. To, uh, 
we're gonna do something different for you guys we can i ask why not run it through the attic and have it looking much cleaner uh filthy i i actually think that when this is all said and done with what he's trying to do and the fact that he's trying to control it with a switch at the bottom that this is the best way to go it's it's an exposed look it's an industrial look um it's it's here to say i could run it down the wall and go in the attic this attic is actually capable of another story so i've got plywood above me three quarter and then mm -hmm. my joists are two by tens and then it's got rock wool down in there so um I, then you'd be Romex on your deck where all my storage is. You can't have Romex on your deck. Um, and then I have to worry about the Romex coming down vertically when I'm moving stuff around up there. It's it's just easier for me just to do this. Um, this one here, I might I might add a plug right <coughs> there. Yeah. Somewhere. And I might fish one down to this plug at some point right there. And, and then I can do a cutting box and just go on yeah. the wall. All right, let's try this. I haven't done this in uh, actually. Let me think. Uh, oh, Derek, man. seven, seven or eight years. I haven't done this in seven or eight years. Let me see how this goes. Um, so we're gonna mark this. It, it, Darren, so, you wouldn't learn anything from me on the roof uh, that I can't tell you on the ground. The the only thing you would see is me uh, on a roof. So we we marked the roof. This is, there's an easier way to do this. If we mess up, we can, we can just fudge it. Maybe. Yeah, there's like a tape measure thing you could do. No, 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 no. We're going to try and deduct and, and figure this out. <laughs> it's, it's more fun when you look like an idiot on stream. So. <laughs> We're risking it. Um, you've hit, you've hit success. I'm just going to say that. No. It's yeah. Good. If, if the back, if the back of this 90 winds up to whatever measurement this is so so we've marked it at the uh at the connector and this is eight and a half inches pretty much um and keep in mind because you can always cut this so this isn't even worth doing but in some certain circumstances you gotta you gotta figure um you need to use this at some point so we're gonna try yeah. it this is eight and a half we better do eight and three quarters, actually. No, it's eight and a half. It's eight and a half. Uh, so I mean, not, not all panels are made in China. If we do an eight and a half Most inch 90 here, the end of this is going to wind up being directly in that connector. But yeah. we also need to deduct half an inch because of our strap. Right. So we are actually going to do... <laughs> is he about to reach his nine. level of incompetence? No. <laughs> What's that? I was answering a question. So if the deduct is five and we want nine, if I mark this at four, this should put our 90 at nine inches. Yep. And we should be able to set this thing directly in there and have accommodation for a half inch strap on the ceiling. Let's try it. All right. All right. So so what did you say I was gonna do? Who's who's that chef who you were saying? Rodney wanted to know he if you were about to reach your level of incompetence. Oh no, not yet. We're no, maybe. Let's see. Well, I think we do that every live stream, don't we? <laughs> Only the ones where you're using tools. Yeah. <laughs> so um no 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 the, the chef where I was gonna have pre pre bent stuff and just pull it out and be like, hey, here it is. Yes, we were supposed to do that, but then you didn't get uh set up in time and you I didn't feel right it doing it i thought about doing it it'd be funny because it'd be like i'd just do my band and i'd drop the pipe and then i just pull just whip one out that was like perfectly done they they could have heard me do the julia childs yeah like yeah you, that's that's uh that's that's the lady yeah it's all yours just like how they you know they pull it out of the oven and it's like perfectly cooked yeah it, it, literally in the back room they've been injecting it with botox and Doing God, it's not even edible, but it looks oh, good. <laughs> Darren, Darren wants me on the roof. Oh, what? He wants me to go up on the roof and show him how to lay, uh, lay out an array. It's super easy. So you, you just have to remember uh, what you're running. So if you're running a, uh, if you're running uh, optimizers, 
then you can go four to one on a roof uh, as far as the optimizers go. So you can daisy chain uh, four, run it in parallel, run it in series. Uh, you can go four to one. And then uh, your rail, you're going to run uh, every three. It's a new piece. It's a new piece of rail. All right. Uh, for most truth. houses, because you can only go about 12 feet. The question is, does it fit perfectly? I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous. Go put on your dress on, Souls. I never wore a dress. That was some really 80s stuff. By the way, I, I was tempted to grab those pants and just wear them out today because I love them. Like, they're really comfortable. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you get it or you an inch off? I don't know yet. I'm fighting the ceiling. So I think, let me see. Does it sit on top of the uh, box here? <laughs> it went inside my box. We are, we are too long. What did we do? I think you're about an inch long. No, it's more than that. We Is did it? Something. We did, did we do five or did we do six? Because you did four. Because you, you said the offset was nine. You did four. Did I? What did I mark? Because I needed four. to mark. Well, that's not right. I'm just saying what you said. Either way, like I said, we can cut it off. Um, that's what Lorraine what and Bob did, said. Yeah, we marked four. We marked the bottom of that. Hang on. We got the measurement here. Let's, let's see what we <laughs> Drill competitions. Really Haxix would be returning all his tools to Home Depot because they don't work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we did. Uh... It's very hard when the person you're going against is using uh, very good technique. We that... did eight and a half. Six is the deduct. Oh, yeah. Six <laughs> is not the deduct. Five is it. Man, I'm so used to running three quarters. Six is not the deduct. Yep. It's uh, it's five. Like I've been saying, I'll stream. But, dude, I didn't run half inch five. I ran three quarter. So, yeah, we're an inch too long. <laughs> That's okay. I was Balky Bartakamus on Bosom Buddies. You were what? Oh, wait. It, was that Bosom Buddies at... We, was Bootsy Buddy, Buddies the one with Tom Hanks? It's before your time, so shut up. I'm asking how is he. Was Bootsy Bu Bosom Buddies the one with uh, Tom Hanks, or was that the one with the dude that played Balky by <laughs> I can't. I can't remember what that one that one show is called. Now you should be right on about an inch, right? Perfect Strangers was Balky. Thank you, big dog. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. That's the one. I, Balky Bartakamoose. That's me. All right. Uh, yeah. Nice. Tom Hanks was in Bosom Buddies. All right. Yeah, I couldn't remember which one it was. I, I knew uh, The Odd Couple. Oh, my God. That is one of my all-time favorite shows. Although I thought the um, Felix Unger. I thought the guy that played Felix Unger was a little. Anybody over the age of 40 will know what this means. All right. So we said we're going to talk solar. What's your beef with solar? I don't have a beef with solar. I, I was literally just, I, I would like, I just wanted to show people how to lay it out. No, no, no. Do, do you think it's worth it? Is it a scam? No, what, what, hell no. Nah, nah, it's not worth it. Um, it's not first, worth it? No, no. Uh, first of all, most people know. Oh, here's your hammer right here. Thank you. I told you, it's screwdrivers work. Um, that drill needs to be ref refunded, Darren. Telling your age, so I know. Uh, probably has going to do a write off. It's a Harbor Freight. I'm sure it's past the 90 day warranty. Uh, you know what? That video was about those guys that keep in every every, every video that I do. What what they don't know is that when I retired, every single drill that I had that I used in the field, I exchanged for brand new. 
uh, because I didn't plan on going back out into the field. So I was just like, there's no sense of keeping a beat up looking tool. And when I started to do the tool test, tool testing, I wanted to, to make it look like they're very good tools that, that haven't been abused to give everybody that same platform. But the, the people that watch are like, well, your tools, ain't, they're not dirty enough. You don't never use them. And I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, I told one guy today, I'm like, if you think you can do a better job running them, prove it. I'll, I'll, I'll take that challenge. I'll embarrass you quick. East Coast Ken Eek is in the house. What's up, East Coast Ken? Hey, you're not level. We're actually going to start wiring here pretty soon. All right. Yeah, your box isn't level. Everybody go check out East Coast Ken. He's got a, a new channel. Uh, it used to be LNR Rise, and then he switched it up. He went East Coast Ken. So uh, Mid-Atlantic Tools is also in the house. Another great channel here on YouTube. Go check him out. And if you guys are into watching teardown videos, make sure to check out Dr. Left Hand Thread. He's, uh, I want to say he's uh, Irish. I want if I recall correct, Irish or Scottish, he's one of those two. Forgot to put a strap there. Almost forgot to put a strap on it. Oh my, Darren! Darren, I, I was like, when that show went off the air, I think I was getting ready to start high school. <laughs> uh, maybe middle school, but I, I was uh, I was not a puppy yet. I love how gentle he is with this stuff. <laughs> Anybody else is OCD kicking in right now? Well, hi. Is it not level? Does, does it look level to anybody else? Oh, yeah, it's level. Does that look level to anybody else? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to question that. All I'm you have to do it. is look at the slats on your wall, sir. Well, <laughs> Uh, Rodney, I try not to unveil my age here. Oh, oh, let me see. Hang on. It ain't level. It lines up with where I put it last time. All right. Now, it's it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It was not level before. I'm just going to Yeah, say well, it. you're right. It's because it wasn't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> It's the angle of the camera. Yeah, the angle of the camera made the wall behind the conduit. No, oh. it was a, <laughs> a, so, good, a good half inch. So you, was, you can run it back, but let me show you what I did. What I did was, while you were talking, we installed this box first. I fully yeah. screwed it into the wall, and I put this level on here. See, I have a strap here. You can't get this level anymore. Right. So once I had this box fully installed, I already had screw holes where I wanted them. If I take this box off, there's only two screw holes in this wall. Didn't I take yep. this box off once I before? Trust you. We got this perfectly level because I can't get a level on this to double check it. Yeah. So, so yeah, we got this completely level. Then we took the back box back off. Then we installed the strap. And now we got the box. Okay. The original Odd Couple ran from 1976 to 1979, I want to say. Okay. Uh, next. Apparently, we just want to talk about old TV shows. Yeah. So, Who? for me, man, I went solar back in 2017. Yeah. Uh, maybe 18. And whenever I moved into this house, I used to live somewhere else in Texas, uh, about 45 minutes away from here. The state penitentiary. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the mortgage was six fifty. dollars uh, I, I bought a house for, oh, I don't know, 65000 something like that. And it was, it wasn't even a full gut. It was just recession and all. Oh, shouldn't have said that word. Whoops. Canceled. Recessed. Recessed. Lighting. 
recess lighting. <laughs> recess lighting all over the place. And people are losing their jobs because recess lighting in 2009, 11, whatever. <laughs> Born in 2011. And uh, yeah, so we got this house. Um, I slowly fixed it up, did the showers, did the tile. This is where I learned like all the things. Um, and then my neighbor was a general contractor. So uh, I know a lot about a lot, but not not enough to, uh, you know, build a whole house or something. But for my age um, and everything, I, I can pretty much do anything I need to. Uh, whether it's done 100% correct, I, I don't know. Electrical, I got unlocked. So um, the mortgage was 600 bucks. Yeah. And we moved into this house. We bought this house for a 6% interest. Because it was, uh, um, because you were crazy. 3,300 square feet for less than 200k. Um, so we, we we were doing well, but this this place was a full gut. Everything was completely full total gut. And when we moved in, we were in survival mode, just trying to get things going. And that's why, like, the doors look like somebody murdered somebody on them, because the guy used to. Uh, this is why the 30 by 20 shop. This used to be a actual car garage and, and tow truck thing. And there's just grease and everything everywhere. So when we moved in, in April, our electric bill was $230 and we weren't even living here yet. We, uh, we were just renovating. So we weren't even here all the time. Yeah. And as time went on, by the time it got to July, our electric bill was almost 800 and something dollars. We were using, we were using 210 kilowatts a day. Uh, I think I use 25 now. I use about 45 in the summer, maybe 55. It's a hot day. Yeah. Um, even with the air conditioner right now growing in this garage. Uh, but we, yeah, we're using 210 a day, three air conditioners, all kinds of craziness. So they came to the house. Uh, our garage sits Southwest. It's probably statistically, like if you looked at my house, you would say this is the best place for solar in all the neighborhood and all of the other neighborhoods running my neighborhood. Like it's, it's really good. The roof sits Southwest. Yeah. And, and we have about probably 24 panels on that one roof. And um, so panel to panel, watt to watt, we are the most efficient just because of the, the location of the panels in general. Yeah. Uh, we ended up getting the solar. I'm not going to get into exactly how much it was, but uh, at $140 a month, they were going to balloon payment us to 270 if we didn't pay it off in 10 years or in what, two years. Right. And then yeah. you get tax credit from the government. Um, I go around all these different places and see a lot of different people for my job. I was talking to a lot of these people. What's that say? I think your neighbor was tapping into your electric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I talked to all these different people. They had new cars. They had all this new stuff. And they said, uh, wait until they call you to refinance your solar because they're going to give you an offer that you can't deny. And uh, we we took that offer. We went down to like 3% interest, 2.8 or something. I, that alone saves $150,000 over the course of 30 years. Yeah. So um, solar worked for me because I was able to play with the money, to move the money around. Um, we rolled the electric bill in. We have a flat rate of 140. It never ballooned up. We kept our 10K from the government for the tax credit. And uh, what's the other thing? Our electric bill recently, because we switched companies. So right now, all the electric companies are completely screwing you around because they know you got solar. They know you're going to have credits and they're taking your credits. Essentially, they're charging an extra $10 a month just because they can. Yeah. So 120 bucks gone before you even did anything now, which is just BS, but it is what it is. Um, because I don't have any credit store because we just switched. My bill has been about $110. So plus the, the 140 that's rolled into it. Yeah. So 250. Um, 250. But we went from 800. Now, how did I do that? We started getting more efficient. We went bridge vents. We went. Uh, and this um, is where it really 
the the changes are really what yes this, the, yeah exactly so you go more it's efficient. not because of the solar right you go more efficient on your house that's that's a guaranteed return that's not going to need to be replaced in 30 years um yeah. you, you do you know you do insulation something like that that's going to pay you that month you do it it's going to pay you instantly you you blow insulation in your house that has zero like mine did you take 350 bucks off of your electric bill the next month so we, we did all these changes um we did all these changes around the same time the solar got turned on so i never got to see my full offset but the last three years that i had green mountain energy um i think my total electric bill to them i think i might have paid 112 dollars for the whole year okay plus the 140 that you pay every month. So you actually, that, you right. are actually paying. That, that is correct. The way I look at it, since I saved that percentage off my interest, it's, it's free and clear. Like it's still there. Don't get me wrong. But the way I did it, um, it, it worked well for me. Yeah. And, and then your usage dropped because you went from, you said you were doing about 210 kilowatts in a, a day. Which is, I mean, that uh, that equates to about 9 kW an hour, which average household usage here in America. So about 9 kW an hour. Um, so, yeah, that that's all in line. But what you did was you did a whole bunch of stuff along with the solar. The yeah. solar alone would not have offset had you not made your home more efficient. Had you not gone in and uh, reduced your uh, consumption, uh, that you stopped running three air conditioners 24 hours a day, you know, your your habits changed. Yeah, Mo no, no doubt. No yeah. doubt. Um, 95, 99% of people that get solar do not change their habits. They think that the solar is putting uh energy back out to the power company and they're they're not going to get paid or, or they're going to get paid or they're not going to have to pay their bill or whatever and the fact of the matter is his current array had he not adjusted his usage uh and his consumption is not big enough to cover what yeah, he's using. yeah that's the other thing right they wanted to put 49 panels on the roof yeah. um, i ended up going with 30 five um because i knew that we we're going to be doing some changes yes i didn't want to commit to that but if i had have let them do that because energy is always increasing so solar's here your electric bill's here solar is always going to kind of follow it and what we've seen with energy is that it's gone skyrocket so solar kind of has followed it behind it if i had have let them do 49 panels I would have been set for the future completely well, at, yeah. at, at, a, at a rate that where energy was here and solar was here, where I could have purchased more kilowatts for, for less money. But it, it, that's like saying, you know, you should have bought a lottery ticket and you know, back in the future. You know what I mean? Like you, you can speculate all you want. Well, like but, California is now requiring all new homes to be built with a solar array. Right. All right. So great for the solar industry. It's actually going to be bad for the energy industry. So uh, and, and I, I can say that without any hesitation, because yeah. uh, when when people have solar and I know this because I've seen it, their usage actually typically increases. And that's because th their mindset is wrong. They think that that array uh, the, the average array installed in America is a 9.6 kW array, right? So it can produce on an optimal day 10 uh, kW, uh, kilowatts an hour, right? right? But you only get optimal 20 days out of the year. Most installers put in the wrong inverter or <coughs> micro inverter. They put in the wrong optimizer. Jack Lacaze, how, how you doing? Uh, and yes, Howie, you do. So there you go. I answered your question, but, uh, so I lost my train of thought there, but 
You said they put in the wrong uh, yeah. array size. So uh, you get a, a, an effect called clipping, which is uh, on, a, on on an inverter. You can actually over uh, you you can go over the inverter size by up to 150 percent, but 133 percent is really where you want to to go. So if you have a 10 k dub inverter, you can actually go to 100 or to 13.3 k dub. You can even run it up to 15 k dub on that same inverter. It just doesn't make sense to do that. You want to stay no more than 133. But if you're, uh, and I, I know this is a huge uh, a problem, but guys were running uh, end phase and when they should be running a P80, uh, they were running a P40. Uh, oh, on your so, yeah, so, so the micro inverter, the micro inverter is the same. It can only go up to 150% above. Oh, never mind. Not, right. Okay. So, yeah. so if not, you're not on your, not on, uh, yeah, I, I misspoke. Anyway, go on. It's all good. So if, if your, if your micro inverter is rated to handle 350 Watts, which by the way, was the biggest end phase could handle until just recently, uh, you could only realistically go to about 400 on your panel before it wouldn't keep up. But It'll only do that for a short time. It's kind of like when we talk about DeWalt having a 20 volt nominal rating. It can go 20 volts for a short period. It can't. Right. It won't keep at 20. Right. It will drop off. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> so the same thing happens with your array. And like I, I can tell you that probably 80, maybe even higher than that, but a good 80% of the uh, of the optimizers or of the micro inverters that are being installed in solar arrays right now aren't even capable of keeping up to the panel at the panel level because you've got panels now that are 480 watts 840 watts uh and, and yes we see all right bend it around very nice um so the 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 panels that are being made now are uh, too big for your micro inverters. So you've got a failure in your array because how they sell it to people is they take the number of panels they can fit on your roof and, and match it to the number of uh, kilowatts an hour that you use currently. And they go, okay, this is what you need to offset your bill. And, um, yeah, it never works because you only get optimal, like, like I was saying earlier, you only get that amount of KW or can only get that amount of KW out of your array for 20 days out of the year. Most of the time you're sporting between 60 and 80% of what your, uh, of what your array can do. Uh, and this holds true for Robert. Um, I, I've talked to him about it before and, and it does hold true for him. He's only doing 60 to 80% of what his array can do uh, on any given day. Uh, right. you, I mean, you go through it and to, if everything matched, so if, if your uh, panel match, your inverter, micro inverter optimizer, uh, if, if they all matched and it was perfect for the array and you lived in the ideal conditions which is a place uh, like if Seattle wasn't so stormy all the time, perfect climate, right? Uh, if Seattle got sun 365 days out of the year, that would be the perfect climate for solar. Right. In the South, horrible because your array doesn't work very well in the heat. So you actually get more efficient like in the fall and winter. Match, man. That's so good. That is cool. Of course, I missed it. Well, you know. Not, not all of us are perfect. There you go. I know I'm not. Uh, so, you, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it, it doesn't make sense to go with, with solar. There's so many factors in it. And I just want, I, honest to God, I and, just and wanted to show you guys. you build solar arrays. Yeah. I used to. I mean, I'm retired now, but yeah, I, 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 I've done solar arrays for our government, uh, 
put in a ridiculous price. Somebody couldn't. Uh, that I actually didn't win the bid, but the other guy that did couldn't get the job done. So they, they came to me and I was on the higher end of the spectrum and I had to go in and fix a mistake, which <laughs> means I charged them more because that's what you're supposed to do. And I went in there and I got the, a 1.2 megawatt project done in 43 days, which is unheard of, but working by myself. Yeah, so, that's, like, uh, I, that's pretty good. I can run the entire thing. Uh, like I can soup to nuts, start to finish. I can do the entire array and I'll still look at you every single day and tell you that solar isn't worth it. The cost, like yeah. to get everything in line, the cost is, is so astronomical. It'd be, you're talking about 50 to 60,000 uh, to get an, an array that'll cover you not only for your current usage, but future usage. Which means if you're if you're using like that idiot about 9.6 kW an hour, you really should have a 12 to 13 kW array. So oversize it, and yeah. the cost of that would be astronomical. You and, and then you're talking battery storage, uh, which uh, I mean, if you go Tesla Power, uh, the Powerwall is probably the most popular. There's like a three-year waiting list on it. And the minimum cost when you add in that to an array is about sixty to eighty thousand uh, dollars just to have battery backup. If you go with a, a and we're not even talking heavy cell. I, I'm getting too far into the weeds. I, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, we're not even talking heavy cell or lithium ion batteries. Uh, lithium ion, smaller, more efficient, more cost. Heavy cell batteries. Very nice. Heavy cell batteries do. That's stranded. Do do work. It looks good. It's a pain. This is why you're doing it, not me. Yeah. Are those Klein version tactics? Yeah. Uh, Klein versions of what? Th these? Yeah. Yes. These are my favorite. Reason number one would be. Uh, do I have the other ones? I don't think I can catch them. Um, when when you open these up to make a joint here, yeah, you don't have a lot of real estate that'll cut your whole finger off. They're, they're, <laughs> like for real, like a lot of them have like scissors back there, and yeah. dude, it's just the way it is, man. Whenever I'm, I'm looking at anything, I'm looking at how safe can I be when I'm using something because I get complacent a lot, and you know you're doing the same task all the time. Um, I've, I've gotten my share of blood blisters from certain things. Yeah. And I figured out what tools I want in my hand at all times and what tools I don't. And uh, something like this that, that keeps my hand away from the blade and I'm way back here with a lot of real estate to push on is, is another tool that I really, really like. That's why I like that. Uh, was it the tough belt? And Brandon, I, I agree with you. The, Cost of materials and the weight uh, for them is more than the labor. Every contractor here is having major problems. Yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. It, it's, uh, it is a huge problem. I always had a great relationship with the, uh, the local distributor. So uh, I, I actually got preferential treatment from them. So they would order, they, they would get stuff by the truckload just for me. Nice. Yeah. Sometimes it's a pain to get so, you know stranded to do that. Um, hey, the other thing about this is that this is uh, not a current carrying conductor, so it's not going to be moving unless you have a fault. Right. Uh, you know, you do want it tight, but I mean, the maximum. You're going to get me all technical in here again, too. No, we didn't ask. This this will actually have an AIC rating on it <laughs> of uh, of amps interrupting current of, of what this thing's actually gonna live through. Yeah. This is plenty. So we're about to uh, show you how this all works now. Um, so the way this guy is is with electric is what I can do with you on solar. Yeah, I I, I can really just waste your time on it. I'm actually going to switch this out to black. That way I don't think that it's a. And to think I was just, 
I, I was just, I wanted to go super simple. I just wanted to show you guys how you would install it on your roof, like no, this is how you would arrange it. Too. So yeah, that's one thing I'm not going to do. We're just going to run solid the whole time. I'm not going to run stranded on a on a hot. I'm just not going to do it. Okay. There's nothing that says you have to. Well, it's just not. I mean, you'd need stay cons, and I'm not going to do something stupid. Another thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what we got here, right? We have a switch, okay? And we almost dropped our drill. Um, that's an impact. Impact, whatever, dude. When you're in construction, <laughs> you call them drills. That, that, that's going to be so much trouble on this channel. They're like, you call it an impact a drill. It's like, dude, they had a thing to turn when I pulled the trigger. All right, so. <laughs> uh, hot coming in into the switch. Yeah. Is going to control this receptacle? Yeah. Now, this hot here that's going to go on this switch, it's going to come in here. Let me see here. Let me see here. Let me see. The hot coming in here is going to go to a GFCI. Yep. It's constantly hot. So, we're going to wind up with GFCI protection on this plug and this switch. So, when get this here so you can see it easier. Holy moly. All right, so neutrals go for your loads, which would be, you know, an appliance yeah. or something. Receptacles, switches don't get neutrals. Um, you got to put a neutral in the switch box, though, which we are going to have because it's going to be a double gang box. Yep. So we're going to have a neutral in our switch box. Per code, we actually don't have to have a neutral in this box because we have a raceway, a pipe. So we have a means to get a neutral back. If you are running Romex, you have to have a neutral in your box when you're running Romex because there's no means to get it back. So if you got a raceway, don't need a neutral. We're going to put one in anyway. This switch will control this receptacle. That's what it's going to do. And um, yeah, so this is the in. And then this is the uh, line side of the switch here. And you turn it on. Now we have power on the load side of this switch which now feeds this receptacle. And then to complete the circuit, we have the neutral on the other side. Yeah. We got all of our grounds landed. The only thing we got to do now, I'll show you here. We got to bust these ears off. So you'll see these don't fit too well. And uh, this is called an industrial cover. And in order to get it nice, you got to cut these ears off. The, those ears, by the way, are wire strippers. Yeah. So <laughs> you can cut these off. And I'm going to show you a trick right now with tie wraps. That everyone needs to know as well. You can cut these off, but you're going to wind up with a really, really sharp edge. I don't yeah. recommend it. Just um, anytime that you can break a perforated something on electrical, you're a lot better off. That's still very sharp, but it's not near as bad as if we had have just chopped it off. If you're going fast, do whatever you want. Um, let me show you these tie wraps now. Hey, look, we're going to use a hammer. Are you going to use it for hammering? Uh, probably not. <laughs> so we got our tie wraps here. Here we go. Uh, these tie wraps on Tools with Souls channel, and I think I did a short on it. This bag was four dollars at Lowe's. So if you guys aren't subscribed, you guys could be missing out because four dollars for four hundred tie wraps, and they're UV rated, so you can use these outside, and they won't um, deteriorate. Are they PV rated? I, I, I don't know. Is that a thing? No, they're just tie straps, man. Okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> I was like, I haven't been asking for that. It was like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. So, so there's two ways to do this, right? Everybody, you cut these off. And um, I'll get it as flush as I absolutely can for you guys. And you still see. Behind there, you got a little lip there, and that thing is sharp. And this is perfect because this is a colored box, so you can see how sharp this is. Here you go there. Like it. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. It's actually digging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's super sharp. Um, if you, I'm actually going to cut this off right now so I don't cut my fingers because they're they're really dangerous. They really are in the job site. Yeah. If, if you got a lot of hands working in that area, uh, if you take this, 
you tighten it like we did before. <coughs> and you take your clines and you twist. And it doesn't take very much. And I'm doing this one handed like crazy. Here we go. There. Now it's twisted. Mm -hmm. And it is, I mean, it, dude, there's nothing there. Um, I could lick it if I wanted to. Oh, it's just not there. There's, there's nothing there to scratch. I don't want to show you how hard I'm pushing. We actually rubbed the whole hole in it. Hang on, we got a different spot. There you go. We're on the light blue. See there? You're not yes. scratching like you were on the blue with the other one. Right. So if you're if you're strapping a whole bunch of cable on a cable tray and someone decides, hey, someone needs to go on that cable tray and readjust this, and you're the only one that's been cutting these, guess who's climbing on that cable tray on their forearms while they're while they're crawling on all that stuff? Because I've I've strapped wire that's this big and you gotta strap it, mm -hmm. you know, every other rung or something. You're talking 2000 ties, uh, you know, within 40 feet or something, depending on how many cables you got. Uh, let's see here, Robert. All I do a lot of vinyl in hotels will cost five gallon of clay vinyl glue went from 225 to $700. Holy moly. For five gallons, I was quoted 300 a gallon at DMT paint. I can no longer make money on material. Uh uh. Robert, did you see his question? What question? I don't know. <laughs> Impact Nation got laughed off the job site today. I really hear, hurt his feelings because he brought a Chicago electric brush. <laughs> you not get jet laughed off my job site. That's all I'm going to say to you. <laughs> oh, break it right. Oh, I, I love it. Somebody. Let's see. What what question did I miss? What's up? I, I'm trying to fi figure out what question was missed. Oh. Climb version tactics. You, uh, I answered how easy. I told him that it was, yes, you still had to. I think, uh, who, who said that? It that was said, uh, a while ago. No, the, the cost of materials right now is ridiculous, which the housing market is... Uh, Rodney Widger said, did you see my question? No. What what was the question, Rod? I don't know. Hey, uh, we need to walk through uh, your house, Robert. Do what? Never... So then these... I, I don't know. Covers, just... They come with these screws yep. and these nuts. <laughs> and uh, these nuts. Yeah, yeah I got you. Yeah. And they come with their own little uh, lock washer thing on the back of them. <laughs> and if you hold them back here and you screw that in there. And after doing this for years, guys, you just stop caring about your fingers. Like it's it's just a, it's just another thing. You got to hold the thing and you got to endure the pain. It's just it is what it is. So people see me do a lot of things. It looks pretty reckless. And I would agree, man. But I I just been doing it for so long. Like I flat out no longer care if it hurts while I'm doing it because you got to do it. That's all good. The, the people that are saying that stuff probably never made money using tools. Are we, are we making progress here? There we go. Yeah, you're making progress. It's working. Oh. I've not seen anybody take this long to do this. So, this, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, I, I mean, you, you going to get Pedram over here to uh, mud your room or something? Yeah, man. <laughs> that was a joke, by the way, folks. That, that was, yeah, that was definitely a joke. Anybody that gets too too serious here. Oh, my goodness. Where is Pedram, dude? Um, I don't know.
There you go. <laughs> and you install that. Yeah. In your wall. And you also tie your grounds together. Yeah. That's that's the proper way to make that up. Uh, ground up or ground down. Now, in this case, I've got my ground up because my switch says off. Yep. It does not say no. So the switch will tell you. <laughs> if the switch says no, it's telling you, no, don't put me this way. I like my grounds up for the simple reason that if you have perfect example, which I'll have, you got a handy box cover. That's going to be your only screw in the middle there. Okay. Yeah. We have a receptacle. It's barely hanging on. We've all seen them in the kitchen. It's barely hanging on. And you got something plugged in here and here. Uh, like, well, I guess something. Why don't I have a something? Doesn't matter. Something's plugged in here and here. Okay. In this case, in case we, we put it this way. Something's plugged in here. This screw, you only got one screw. If it fails and it drops, it's going to land across your hot and your neutral. And if someone goes to unplug something and this screw decides it's tired of being a screw, this faceplate drops, you're going to go across hot and neutral and you're going to get bad burns. If it's upside down, you got your ground on top. If this plate fails, it just sits on top of the ground. Yeah. So that's that's the old time reason why you see these upside down. I like them down. Same thing whenever you're laying them horizontal. You want the neutral on the top. That way you just sit on the neutral and not across the hot. Because if this thing's not properly grounded, you'll just energize this faceplate. Someone touches it. You're in a kitchen. You got wet shoes. You got wet floors. Uh, and you're not GSEI because it's an older space. You know, you've energized uh, yep. everything. So, and, and then you got stainless steel tables, which ground you. So, um, yeah, that's that's the reason. It's a little bit reaching. I understand that. But that is yeah. the reason. Uh, Brandon, he's still on step two. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just, I just yeah. joke. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Our ho hospitals are starting to have them. Uh, what we what most people would consider upside down. Uh, I don't know, man. Um, I don't think so. It's, it's just a spec. It depends what that engineer wants. And, and you never know what the dude's going to want. And, and usually it's wrong anyway, so. Yeah. All right, so we're going to install this now. We are going to tie our grounds together. Hey, to next ground. week, tune in. I'm, I'm going to do, um, I, I'm going to literally remove all the knob and tube from downstairs in the basement. I'm going to run new outlets to all, all the rooms in my house. And we're going to see if we can get it done in under two hours. I'm not going to do that. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, I you being serious. No, no, I'm not being serious. I will say this. A lot of what he's doing uh, and the reason it's taking so long is because he is on camera and he's trying to make sure that we all understand it and he's talking. So, yeah, when you, when you talk, you really... Eric been busy dealing with my son and schoolwork as well. Um, you should let your son do his work. You don't. You, you're not supposed to do it for him, uh, <laughs> Brandon. What is some tape here? It's all good. You good? I can show you the number one use for electrical tape. And it is pretty much the only thing you use electrical tape for is never connections. It's to tape up wire to push it. And uh, if you think that electrical tape is for wrapping up connections, I don't know what to tell you because uh, it's not. It's for pushing wire. You're having all kinds of trouble with that right there. There um, you go. It just makes this noise while you fight it. Mm. So the company that I used to work for would make you wrap these with tape. 
That's what they wanted. Raph, what would take? Receptacles. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I do that with a 9-volt battery. I always put... I always put black electrical tape over a nine volt battery when it goes in the drawer. You can use scotch tape, but scotch tape lets loose over time. Black tape holds better. Yeah. The electric. The, uh, so if you're just tuning in, uh, that, that I should do that. I should show you guys how dangerous a, a nine volt battery is and why you <laughs> should always cover the end. Because what, what ends up happening most, I, I know for me anyway. Can you see that? Can I see what? I can see the tape. The conduit in there? No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. There you right. go. Oh. Back, to back 90. Yeah, hold oh, right there, sir. And then uh, that's the box. And then we did a 90 to the ceiling. Eventually, we'll get a box on the ceiling. We have straps within three feet of our box. It's supposed to have them 10 feet after per code. We got more than six inches of free conductor here. We left more than six inches of free conductor here. Uh, we showed you how to wrap everything. We bonded everything. Uh, the only thing we didn't do on stream was use a hammer properly. So uh, I guess I guess we'll go ahead and do that right now. And we're going to tighten up this connector. And yeah, that is a Klein screwdriver. That's a. And this might be the first time in my life I think I've ever used a hammer on an electrical box uh, that wasn't plastic that I wasn't banging a nail into, which I almost never do that anyway. So anyway, with a nine volt battery, most people end up throwing it in a drawer in their kitchen or whatever. And any metal that touches the two ends, well, that creates an arc, can create heat. Uh, you ought to see what a nine volt battery does to a Brillo pad. It's amazing. So, and that's why I say most people just throw it in there and, uh, Oh, how's that? I ain't getting it, bro. I'm back running, having trouble with materials, bro. I'm going to have to switch it up and do something else. So I don't have to wait every jack of all trades, bro master. Uh, Rodney, he paid nothing for that wall. Oh, my slat wall? Yeah. Yeah, you can say I traded. I think I got that mosquito. Yeah, the wall. Well, I'm sorry to hear you having for. trouble, Brandon. Yeah, sorry you're, you're having trouble getting your material, Brandon. Uh, Brandon, you live in California. Uh, am I right on that? Yeah. You go on. Uh, I, was, I, was waiting, I was waiting for Okay. I just wake up. Oh. I live in the Midwest. It, we're, we're, ha we're not having the material crunch uh, that other places are. But they're probably because we're not using as much as other places are. Thanks Over for being here, Jonathan. Now. We appreciate you, brother. What's that? We're going to put this uh, GFCI in now. All right. See, you, you see how much, like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm old school, I guess. I, I struggle with using tools for the job. But I mean, for the job, when you can just strip it like that and be done. I mean, you literally have the right tool for the job in your hand. Yeah. Like yeah. right now, still. <laughs> and it's so, it, it actually is a lot faster to use the stripper on the receptacle. I, I don't think so. That's because you don't do it. I disagree. Once you do it. You'll be like, oh, I'm I'm doing it that that way, but you you won't because you're uh, Brandon, Louisiana. Have oh, you guys okay. Seen I'm sorry. The Klein slide drive. It's the HVAC eight and one. Look at this thing. This thing's crazy. So right now it's quarter inch, and when you pop that down, okay. Like that, thanks, Brandon. I'm sorry. I, I got it right. And then it goes back yep. to quarter inch to five sixteenths. And it's magnetic. It's pretty crazy. So you and the magnet in is in here. That's a five sixteenths for that yeah. round screw. When I pop it to you know quarter inch, it should drop out. 
or it could just float and be stupid. That that magnet's good though. Yeah, it is. This thing's awesome. And the best part about it is is that it's not okay. sharp at all. So everybody ever that has one of these, you gotta worry about this in your back pocket on finishes, sitting back down in your car, whatever you're doing. This thing is rounded over and it goes in your back pocket and it's just man, it's just so much better. Yeah. Uh, Joshua, I'm, I'm sorry. You're in Cali, man. No, elect, uh, no, uh, gas vehicles, 2035 ha homes having to have solar. They're going to start taxing you. If you have a well on your property, that's great. <laughs> All the more reason why, if it, uh, I'm not going to say it. I was uh, something about, yeah, don't say it. Don't the say it. I was going to say something about earthquake and fall in the ocean. That's oh, all I'm yeah, gonna say. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, like say that, nothing controversial. No. No gas power. Oh yeah, the the OPE. Oh. I, I'd be petitioning to to see if I can move to America if I lived in California. Um. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I get, can you get refugee status if you move from California to another state? <laughs> That's funny. Hey, right, Cali is a beautiful, beautiful uh, state. I just don't want to like. I don't want to live there. So we're going on the, line, the the load side of this GSCI here. And what that'll do is that'll protect all of our everything. Yeah. Lights, plugs, everything. It just looked like a flash of elbows to me. I don't know what to tell you. Is it because I'm working so fast or is it in the way? Yeah. What? Which one? Oh, no, 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 I'm just teasing with you. I'm sure it applies to many people. Uh, I, I'll tell you this, like, you know how Robert's going on about electric and stuff. You guys don't want to get in that solar conversation with me uh, most of the time because it's it, it just be comfortable, take a seat and, and relax. That's why I, I've avoided talking about solar for the longest time. I, I did one live stream where I'm like, look, if you got solar questions, ask me whatever you want. And I didn't broach it until the, and that was back in November. And I have not talked about solar until just a few days ago. So we're on our load side uh -huh. now. We're going to our line side with uh, Is that our easy? incoming conduit there. But uh, octane batteries, yeah. Boy well, said twenty dollars. I said twenty dollars for octane batteries. You check those octane batteries on eBay, and people are uh, are selling them for like. Well, I say there's uh, the three amp hour is like hundred eighty dollars, and three hundred dollars for a nine. It's crazy. Those people are nuts. But the M12 hack sixty nine dollars in my area with a free six. Oh, big dog, that's awesome, dude. I love it. Go ahead, Robert. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. No, you're good. You guys want to see the flex grinder in action? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm all for it. Did you get did you get your wire fish through yet? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna finish this later. Okay. Well that's up to you, flex sir. Grinder. All right. We're gonna put the uh, three point five stack on it. A anybody, any bets over under on how many fingers he potentially loses? Uh, how about one, you can see it, huh? How about one on camera, sir? <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I prefer. For for that stuff, I actually think the the bandsaw. Well, here's the deal, right? This 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 is my thing with grinders. Right, we'll do it one more time. Maybe Grinders on, on grinder. Maybe on. Yeah, do it one more time. Let me see. Yeah, one more. 
Adam, I think it's because he doesn't want to get up and put that other out. out the All right, so here's the deal with grinders, right? I don't blame you, Brandon. First off, on a job site, you got to have a hot work permit. You got to have a fire watch, and you got to have a fire extinguisher, all of which electricians don't have. So that's true. That's why you don't see that tool flying off the shelf that Milwaukee just made with, you know, the the, the quick cutoff or something. It's it's for. It's more. It's finally more for a homeowner that needs a grinder that's safer than a grinder. I mean, honestly, um, probably good for welders, man. They got the method, method of procedures. They got the mops. They got the. They got all the hot work permits. They got to do all that stuff daily. They they they're on top of it. Uh, as an electrician in construction, you're just never going to use a grinder. If you are using a grinder, you're in trouble because. Yeah. You don't have a hot work permit, first off. There's there's no reason to need a grinder. And then after you're done, you gotta watch you, you gotta watch for what, an hour? An hour of fire watch, right? Yes. Something like that. So um yeah, you just don't see it. Uh the other thing is is that uh, I can't God. imagine trying to pull wire through that. So obviously yeah. you can deburr it. Um Brandon, the, I, I have the the deal that he's talking about over on my channel. It's a short it's actually a Milwaukee hack deal. It's a second hack deal. I, I, uh, I don't know how I feel about the hacks. I, I don't like talking about them. I feel awful. Where's your deep burring tool? What? Nothing. Shaka Gillis with the $2 super chat saying Ryobi tools are trash. And so is Makita. And he... <laughs> Now, he says that wearing his Ryobi pajamas and crawling between his Makita sheets. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get. So, yeah, I just want you to see that. Even after you deburr it, look at all that. Like, So I put my channel locks on this, and now I put my reamer on it. Um, yeah, you can get it clean, but it's, it's just not a practical tool. Mm -mm. for an electrician uh, one of the most practical tools would be this here that doesn't have a battery because milwaukee batteries don't like them that's that's the most practical tool <laughs> at least with a p262 <laughs> what's that Zachary. yeah no uh so Brandon, ha Brandon has a really good application because he is a concrete finisher. I, and I'll tell you the other one that a lot of people don't associate. Go ahead. Uh, the, the other one most people don't associate uh, using a grinder with is be because it's precise is woodworking. But I can tell you that I use I use a wood, uh, I use a grinder in woodworking. Rude. The recip saw wins. The recip saw wins. I like this thing. It's a good size too. Yeah. It is a good size. I like it. I, I mean. Let's see the. Uh... How much does a channel get? From a two dollar super chat, a dollar ten. I want to say yeah. you get a buck, uh, may, maybe a a, a a dollar, but I think it's a buck ten. Should have used the M eighteen Hexall. I got them all. Do I? Yeah, I do. We'll use that uh, next. Yeah, well, Juan, it really doesn't depend on the channel. A $2 Super Chat is the same. YouTube takes about, well, they say they take about 40%, but it ends up being a little closer to 50. I think the average on is like 44. But we appreciate the $2. We, we want to thank you, Doc. Yes, thank you. Got the six.
I think the Flex had it. I, I think the DeWalt had it. Oh, yeah, the DeWalt had it for sure. But you're also using a bigger recip saw than the hacksaw. There you go. Oh, no. Not this again. <laughs> Don't be scared. Oh, it's not my fingers. Oh, well, I'm not scared of my fingers. If it's done in an app, they charge extra. Yeah, I don't know. Where, this has got to be my favorite tool. Oh, really? Yeah. Not yeah, mine. Dude, I, I really, really like the jigsaw. Hey, let's use a general multi purpose blade. It sounds like fun. Okay. Don't, don't, the they, have the, don't they have the bimetal blade in there? Yeah, oh, of that's course right. they do. Well, what fun is that? Hey, it, it's your sleigh. All right. Let's see. Oh, I got the medium metal blade. I guess we could use that. That's not fun, though. Just kidding. We're using the general purpose. I have to return my fog machine tomorrow. It's not working. All right, here we go. Uh, I... <laughs> I think this jigsaw wins. No, it doesn't. Oh. No, it really doesn't. 2.5 battery. It really doesn't win. Let's put the, uh, the 3.5 on it. Thanks, Juan, for, for for helping me out there. I don't know. I, I just say I average it out to about a buck 44. Ooh, that sounds uh, spicy. <laughs> I almost hit my laptop screen. Mm. Don't do that. Okay, let's put the... Uh, oh. The, yeah, the funny yeah. thing is, uh, I've seen the bear use tools and, and watching Robert use tools, and I trust Robert more. Oh, well, that's terrifying. Dude, I just love... Love, love, love this exercise. Uh, so the, we cut some rigid, some two inch rigid in half with that. Rigid? Yeah. The, the Flex makes a nice product. They, they really do. We, we cut some rigid pipe in half with one of these not that long ago. Yeah. Which I don't recommend doing, but uh, he's going to be missing a damn finger soon. So I actually did it smart, <laughs> believe it or not. I put it on the roll there. That way the chance of it getting me was uh like one percent less. So I'll I'll show you all my favorite tool. Uh, it, it's the old rigid Mega Max. Oh, there you go. Well it's gotta take one time him doing that it might be careful bro that's very dangerous the angle I'll, I'll tell you honestly the angle grinder what he was doing with the angle grinder uh, is a lot more dangerous than yeah that's dangerous for sure i was resting it on this fence here which isn't really a fence but i was using it as a fence yeah so i was cheating but uh yeah the angle yeah. grinder the angle grinder bites one time and then it's uh, you got 40,000 RPM spinning through your finger. <laughs> this is one of those things that would be demonetized, unsafe things. <laughs> yeah. But it's done in a professional environment because you're a pro. That's right. So it's all good. No, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, I will uh, do a live stream tomorrow for very brief live stream tomorrow. And I'll lay out an array on, on a house. Thanks for being here, Ted. Great we appreciate show. I learned a lot. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I have to... <laughs> Rodney, Rodney, in order for you to uh, show your favorite tool, you'd have to move your belly. <laughs> Not just move the camera back. <laughs> oh. Why am well, I getting a grinder upload now? 
you you just got to quit going to those websites. <laughs> well, I'm not getting there trying to <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Adam, if you want to, if you want to send me uh, like uh, a picture of your house or whatever, uh, I can do that. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I can lay out an entire array in five minutes, 10 minutes, no time at all. Start to finish. And uh, I'll, sh I'll show you, I'll show you one more cool thing. I used to be able to tell you guys how exactly how many like T nuts, wing nuts you would need. Oh, that is a cool. Have you guys seen this? Yeah. Talk you shot. did a short on it. You did a short on it about two months ago. The guy yeah. with Alzheimer's coming through with the memory. No, no, I never did a <laughs> on it, but man, that's when I had two months ago, dude. I only had like three thousand subs. <laughs> we're not, we're knocking. Uh, you and I are both knocking on ten k. Yeah, you're gonna get there first. I, I don't know about that. I'm positive. I'm positive. I, 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 I was bad. YouTube, YouTube said I was bad. Yeah. Does anybody know? Does anybody not know what this is? <laughs> yes, Rodney. I'm I'm talking to you about moving bellies because mine sticks out fast uh, further. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking about my belly. <laughs> Tools of Texas just got notification as a Milwaukee grinder. And oh, okay. <laughs> Milwaukee grinder and the th I thought you were going to the wrong website. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tinder, not grinder. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I, what do I know? I don't, go to any of them. I don't go to any of them. Uh, the, uh, probably seven o'clock tomorrow. I'll have this guy on. And uh, if, if nothing else, I'll do my own because I was in solar and I don't have solar. Uh, I can I, I can do the layout on my house if nobody wants to offer up like a, a picture of their home. You know, I don't need the address. You can just send me a, a picture of your home to my uh, my email, and well, I'll Logan I'll knock it out. Yo, yo, what's, what's up? What's up, Logan? Glad to have you here. Just as we were wrapping up. Yeah. Uh, but if you guys want, yeah, I, I can. Uh, I, I'll literally run it. I'll show you how the rail goes. Uh, if I know the type of roof that you have, I'll even be able to tell you like uh, fasteners that you would have. It's super easy. I mean, yeah, super easy for me. Well, uh, that about wraps it up. Um, appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, what not to do at the end of this stream, what you learned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you found the one you like, Brandon. That's the most important thing. Uh like like I said, man. After you, you get complacent, so so yeah. I always try to uh, I might do crazy dangerous stuff, you know, on camera or whatever um, with the jigsaw and stuff. But I wouldn't do it if I thought it was dangerous. Uh, for sure, it's dangerous for the average person. I've been running tools for a long time. I I know what to expect, what they're gonna do, where I'm gonna wind up. Um, you know, uh, push, not pull. Um, yep. Pull, not push. <laughs> Uh, you know, so you don't bust your knuckles, um, th things, things like that. Uh, yeah. Um, just complacency kills. Um, that's, that's, that's the biggest thing. Logan, call it. What's your opinion on Milwaukee versus flex? Oh man. And he paid me for it. All right. Uh, this is my thought. This is my opinion. I think Milwaukee is like Apple right now. Now let me let me let me pan around real quick because we, we got some Milwaukee on the table here. You're lucky you didn't ask me, Logan. I'd already answered you. And and we got some Milwaukee over there. Thanks, Adam. Um, we appreciate you, brother. Hey, good luck if you're hanging. Milwaukee uh, makes some of the best tools that I've ever used. That's that's my honest opinion. Um, I've had this since they came out. This 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 I, I had to put a hook on it myself, and you can see where it's just. This thing has been used. I've, I've made my money 20 full with this tool. It's brushed. Um, and it just, it just gets it done. It's a really good tool. There's nothing wrong with this. They make really good tools. 
Um, I've got a Milwaukee grinder here. Brandon, you can't say that about me. You ain't been running tools longer than I've been born. <laughs> Unless you're really old. <laughs> and I, I don't think you're that old. This is me, my oldest one, man. I used to have what they called the Magnum, which was a 720, no, 650 inch pounds of torque um, brushed. This is the 260420. And this thing still works. This thing still gets it done. I've had this grinder. This is the first one that they ever made. Go, go watch my shorts. This thing still gets it done. Um, I don't even know what this is. What is this? 2653. Uh, this was right after one key came out, I think. And, and it still gets it. There's, they make really good tools. I think they need to oh. step their game up because they got comfortable. They pulled a Makita. And um, at the end of the day, you got a battery here that, that's this small that outputs. You, everybody talks about fuel this, fuel that, Milwaukee fuel. You got to have asking, fuel for Milwaukee on. to be anything. Hold on. He was asking Milwaukee and Flex. I, we're, we're, just we're just keep that. it to Milwaukee and Flex. We're, we're getting to that. Hang on. Have you yeah. ever replaced a switch on that grinder? No. Okay. No, and I've cut a lot of tile with it. I haven't cut a lot of metal with it. I've cut a lot of tile around toilets. Um, I did a whole shower because all of my all of my edges were faced in. Um. Okay. No, this no is good. worries. So, oh, he says, okay. So this is, uh, you know, a 6.0, um, the yeah. best battery you got to get. Uh, fairly big, fairly heavy. Uh, man, HO wasn't out whenever I was hot and heavy into the field and in, into <laughs> construction. Um, you, you had CP uh, two, 2.0s and you had 5.0s. Yep. And that's what that's you had. Uh, this, this is definitely a treat. But unrealistic in in a uh, in in an impact. It's just this thing's the size of the impact. So anytime that you wind up where the tool, oh the tool is the same size as the battery. You, you got to think about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so I, I'll say this. Back the, to flex. The the performance increase that you get from a high output battery a six amp output battery on an impact is almost negligible it really doesn't truly make that big a difference on a drill on some other two like more high output or high draw items yes it does so my opinion on the the difference between milwaukee and flex milwaukee has a bigger line if you're in it you're happy on flex a smaller line but great tools all the way around if you're in it you're happy if I had to go with one right Milwaukee. now, today, it would be Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Um, yeah. Flex needs more tools. Uh, 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess. I guess you could say it that way. Um, they're, they're just oh, smart with their, with their sizes. I mean, 2.5 for something. It, it, it outputs, you know, decent enough to get the job done. Uh, I the, like the, the lifetime warranty half. is very interesting right now. Yeah. That's this is where I like the 3.5. The, the the, yeah. So, so that's, yeah, the this, this 3.5 here. I can't even find it. It's, uh, I was, oh, it, hey, Logan. It's so small. I always lose that. I pick it up, I put it in the tool, and I, I don't know what I'm using because it's so light. Yeah. The, the stack lithium, man, Milwaukee needs stack lithium um, next year. Yeah. And, and, and who knows what will be out. On everything else next year after that uh they they really dropped the ball recently all in all milwaukee's gonna be more um readily available you're gonna get more tools and you don't need high output stuff in general to do anything you just you just don't need it a lot of this youtube talk says you gotta have this you gotta have that you don't really need any of that all you need is is whatever comes in the kits and it'll last you for five, six years of heavy, just just really, really bad abuse in, yeah. in dirt, in trenches, um, dropped off of scissor lifts, 
run over, kicked, thrown in the bottom of job boxes, Milwaukee stuff, lasts. Uh, I, I, I will say this, Logan. When you're talking about Milwaukee, there's only really one line that you want to get into because the brushless and the brush stuff is just straight up ass. It's garbage. Uh, it's the fuel line. You want to go with the fuel. Uh, yeah. they're, they're top of the, the line stuff. And that's just the truth of it. And we wish you luck in your, like Rodney's saying, wish you luck in your career. And I hope you're enjoying it. But yeah, the, the fuel line is the only way to go. And, and I don't know that no other tool review you're going to is going to be like, oh yeah, the, the brushless or the brushed Milwaukee <laughs> is ass, but it is. I mean, you, yeah. you the fr frankly, for the money that you're spending for that, you can go to another top end line and get better performance than the brushed or the brushless. Um, so there, there you go. There is that. I did not know that. I'm glad I waste. I'm, I'm, I wasted some money. So Sorry. here's the deal with Flexor right now. They got a lifetime warranty, and they absolutely stand behind it. I don't know how long that's going to last. This year, but what was that? The, so uh, the, the founders. They're still doing that. Yeah, it's going to end this year. I mean, I don't know how long yeah. they're going to say that they're going to replace your tools for free, even though it's lifetime. Like, I I just don't I, – I, I don't know. Do you, do you buy them all right now and just let them fix your tools forever? Like, I it's 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 pretty crazy. Um, I, I finally broke a truck because I've been trying to destroy these things for a straight year. I've been trying to destroy them for a year and a half now, but for a straight year, I tried to destroy them. I finally broke the chuck. I called the dude. I told him that I was trying to break it. And his next words out of his mouth was, when do you want to get it replaced? And yeah. I was like, oh, I was I was calling about registering something. And I just told you in passing that I broke something, you know, just just to kind of fish around for information. But the dude was like, yeah, I just send it in. No, he didn't say that. He said, we're going to send you a replacement. And then in five days, I had a brand new one. And I have, yeah. I have this one, which is brand new and shiny. And I've got this one. And and Brandon, you're right. I I my favorite I my favorite battery that's, that's Milwaukee. Big, I've, I've used this chuck as a hole saw, okay, through brick to make the brick wider. Um, they're, they're they're really good tools. They are a little bit heavy. Um, it's also more voltage. Uh, you you get the instant benefit of a bigger motor and stuff. Um, if you don't mind big tools, this is the way to go. Uh, I, I don't know, just from my experience with Milwaukee, all those years, you can't go wrong with Milwaukee. No, Milwaukee, their hammer drill and their impact driver. Those are the two core ones that we all like to talk about, but their, their hammer drill and their, and their impact size, speed, power, it all goes to Milwaukee. They, they are a step above everybody else when it comes to that. Uh, it, to get a comparable DeWalt, you got to go with the 998 or the 999 and put on a big battery uh, to get that type of performance. The Flex, Flex is actually with their, what, their 8 amp hour battery, even their stacked lithium 6, the Flex it's, it's is heavier, big. is heavier than a uh, Flex Volt DeWalt with a 999, uh, with a, the, the 6 amp hour Flex Volt battery. What did you say, country, to everything you've learned about Milwaukee? Come on, Robert, don't spread that pop when I was good enough. Definitely not not hot. I, I don't know, man. I ran the 5.0 for years. I never thought to myself, that, keep in mind that HO didn't wasn't out whenever I was in construction, um, hot and heavy like that. But I never, like, as an electrician. Okay, so let me back up. The 3.0 and the 5.0 are, in essence, like the same performance. That That's probably true. Um let me let me back up. As an electrician, um, everything I did today, that's that's not strain on a tool. So so Brandon T is you know cutting lumber, whatever he's doing. Um, that's that's a good point. That that Ooh. you need that extra power. Um, as an electrician, you don't you, you could get away with uh, a lot worse. You get away with a lot worse. I'll say, Logan, what what. Are, are you in the Milwaukee line? Is 
because the Milwaukee tower light is great. I, I really like them. I, I actually think Milwaukee makes some of the best lights out there. I need a work light for tie spaces and under houses doing duck jobs. What? And thank you for the $5 super opinions. chat. So uh, you want something that you, that's small and compact that you can set down and projects light. Um, honestly, you probably want this. Check this out. This is, this is actually really cool. I'm just, I, I'll just ruin your day. When you're building, you need it. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I'm going to ruin his day because whatever one he gets, I'm going to get it equivalent. You're not going to beat this. I don't, actually, I don't know if anything can beat this right now. This 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 thing is really cool. So it extends out. <laughs> you got the option. You see this? What do you got? Now. You got the rigid? Yeah. I, I got the rigid floodlight. You, you can pop because that Because I can go down here and I can just, and look, it's plenty bright. It's illuminating my garage right now. Yeah. It's small. This thing is like stupid bright. Uh, um, and then and then the stand plugs in. So if you don't want to use the battery, which is what I've been using all stream this whole time, which is plugged it into the wall. Uh, it hangs on rafters and it's completely enclosed. Like if you set it down in something, I don't think that it would get wet underneath the crawl space. Yeah. Uh, and when you're done, you just pop it back on and you plug it back in and you put the battery in and it's got a USB-C charger built into it, which is pretty cool. So you get, you get a so, higher output to not in your charge. Not only do you get the removable base with this, right? It has... Who, who makes that? Rigid. It has rafter hooks, and you can mount it to a tripod. So this little floodlight from Rigid is actually what I would tell people. It, this is probably uh, one of the handiest tools that I have ever used. <laughs> Uh, okay, this, but now, uh, as a matter of fact, the other day I did I did this. I used this to change a receptacle uh, with the camera going. So see, now I have no light on my face because I was using this all stream. Hang on a second. Yeah, four thousand lumens on and off. The tripod is the absolute best on the market. I agree with you, Brandon. If you could use a tower light, the Flex Tower Light's probably the best. So here's the deal, and Brandon will contest to this. The battery life on the Flex is just ridiculous. Holy crap. Absolutely amazing. Like stupid. Like I have not been able to kill a battery on this light in a task. Like I, I've, I've left the room. I've been doing the flooring. I've come back and it's it, by the time I'm, it's the end of the day and I'm ready to charge it or something. How long do the batteries last on your light there, Brandon? Hours, like tens, twelves. They, they last a long time. Yeah. I'll tell you the Milwaukee, the, the, the tower light on the Milwaukee also lasts a good long time. Um, it, but there, there's no wrong answer. It, really what it breaks boils down to is personal preference. Yeah. I, uh, I get all the time when people ask me like differences between brands just personal preference that all the tools that are made now are well not all of them the amazon crap stay away from makita stay away from but most of the rest of them uh the the tools that are made today are far superior to any anything that has this a hybrid you light. can plug in is is good to have this is a good light um i think they got an updated version of this now you can see this thing actually has insulation inside the uh 20 hours on high, Brandon says, with the 10 amp. That's incredible. How many? Uh, 20 hours. 20 hours, yeah. No wonder I haven't been able to kill it with a 10 amp. So a five is 10 hours, or give or take, you're going to get more heat build up with, with when you get less uh, real estate to heat up, you, you're going to diminish. So you probably get seven hours on a five and 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 20 on a on a 10, something like that, maybe eight hours on a five. It's it's not it's not fifty feet it's it, it it's not amp for amp because when you get a bigger battery, um, you you have more real estate to <laughs> to dissipate heat into. 
Logan, you should send into my channel. Ten videos of Makita going against everything, and it hasn't won a single time. <laughs> it could be user bias, but I typically let the tools speak for themselves. Uh, plus, I don't like Makita. My hands are too big to use them. So this one here, and, and you don't need high outputs on lights. They're, they're not gonna yeah. they're not gonna help you out anymore. Um, the stacked helps lights though. The 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 architecture of the battery and the way it dissipates current and uh, all that stuff is just way more efficient. Um, this is a six on this light, and it's bright. It's 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 that true view, whatever they want to call it, where you get a you get a nice light to it, and it plugs in. This, yep. this is a good option if you got Milwaukee. I think they have a different version of this now. Yeah. It's pretty well the same. I've had this for about eight, maybe 10 years. The rigid, the brand new rigid panel light, which is another great option for you. I saw that. It, it looks like the folding light that uh, he showed you with the flex, but it doesn't have the, 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 the tower to it. So it's it'll sit on the floor. Uh, Mike Am says, you suck. Sorry to hear that. Um, It'll sit on the floor. It'll it has the rafter hooks, but it's also a hybrid light, so it'll run on batteries. It'll run on uh, extension cords. It, it's it's just really good. Yeah, flex is the best light and fan. Yeah, I really like my fan too. Yeah. Uh, All right, and the flex row. I can charge my phone. Oh yeah. The fans looking, whisper quiet too. You can set it on low and. You can't even uh, hear it, and it, it, it's on it's on two or one and a half, if that's a thing. It's a dial, so I don't really know. That's actually been running the entire time. Yeah. Is that on a battery or does it plug in? It's it's a hybrid, so it is on – it plugs in right right now. That was awesome. I retract my statement. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. It's all good. Well, uh, um, you're good, yeah. Jeremy. No worries, man. I don't know what you're sorry about, Jeremy. You've been kind of quiet tonight. I don't know what's up, buddy. But we appreciate you being here, Jeremy. Off and yeah, die. Thanks, thanks for all the support, everybody. You guys are awesome. Um, uh, Logan, I can answer this for you. If if you're being serious. The best fan for you to get is the little Klein fan. The Milwaukee is too big. You're going to forget about it. And the little clippy Ryobi thing, once you throw a battery on there, it's straight up turd. Go with the Klein fan. Get it at Home Depot. Get it online, wherever you need to get it, wherever it's the cheapest. But that is the best one for you if you're up in the up in attics with 130 degrees. I'm, I'm just going to save you some time and trouble. Don't even bother looking at YouTube. That's the answer. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Klein fan. And get the one with, that looks like it's got the big clip on the bottom, like a clothes hanger. But, and, and it really is the best. Uh, nice for, for for me, man. Anything like that, the, the battery technology with anything stacked right now just outlasts so good that but, that I'm going to go with flex on something that's going to run all day like that. I, I, I'm just going to say, uh, and, and the reason I say the Klein is because it's got the perfect size, weight, speed. Uh, it, it's it really is uh, it really is the best uh, the best one for addicts. I know electricians. Uh, I, I know in solar, that's the one we use. I'm a big rigid guy. I have over 200 rigid power tools. I, I can't tell you how many power tools I have altogether. I have everything basically, except for uh, Bosch, I think is the only one I'm, major one I'm missing. Um, I, 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 so I'm, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not really biased when it comes to this. I can tell you that the Klein is the one that I see in the field the most. And the reason is because of the, the the weight of it. It it doesn't really bother you carrying it around. And you can clip it on your belt and go. Yeah, you want... I've, I've got this one here. I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, you rated fans DeWalt versus Ryobi. Basically came down to variable speed on DeWalt and one two on Ryobi. Battery life was better on DeWalt too. Yeah, hey. Um, honorable mention real quick. I don't know about you, man, but whenever I'm going in an attic, 
or underneath somewhere. I don't, you're doing a duck job. So you're going to be living down there for a little bit. Uh-huh. I just want to get to my box, make a, <laughs> whatever the heck I'm doing and get out. Um, whenever I'm traveling, I like this one because it's rubber. And as you twist, you twist on your stud. So on your stud face, you yeah. almost kind of lock it in there to where you. That's actually you what that that's tension for. Where you're twisting with the rubber against it. And you can kind of, you can find and feel your way and, and crawl and use this and put all your weight on it while you're crawling through the attic on this thing. And it puts out a lot of light. It is, it's a super bright light. It'll light up a whole attic. I don't think it's going to light up a whole duck job for you. Um, but this, this is probably one of my favorite lights. A lot of these get a lot of hate because Brandon, do you want to people don't realize that a smaller light, like I would love to have the flex one. Um, I think, I think I might get one soon. I'd like to have the flex one to see what it's like crawling around with it. Cause anything led that's small like this is usually my weapon of choice when I go in an attic anyway. I can and then see we got that. this fan. This is kind of the honorable mansion as well. Um, the battery life is probably not going to be great, but uh, it's a small fan, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Milwaukee. You can get you can get a lot of those fans on, on a battery on a two amp hour battery to run about an hour. Yeah, uh, and uh, I know on the rigid, which the rigid is too big. It's, you're not you're not taking a, a ten inch fan into the attic with you. It's just not practical. Um, that is a good choice. Yeah, if you're already in into the uh, Milwaukee line, then get the uh, it, the M12 fan. I would whatever yeah. is you know that's on you. It's just personal preference. I've also got the M18 right there. Hey, Mike says you flashed him. Yeah, do you like it? Uh, you're the only person I know that's ever been arrested for aggravated mopery. <laughs> mopery 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 <laughs> my letters freaking everywhere now you don't know what aggravated mopery uh i guess not. moping around I don't, I don't know uh so aggravated mopery is exposing yourself to a blind man <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay that was it was in a movie. I can't remember what movie, but the uh, somebody was getting charged with aggravated mopery, and it, it just stuck with me. And I was like, "Oh, okay, that's funny." So yes, he's been arrested for aggravated mopery. That's the little funny. flex light is awesome, bro. It's a spotlight and bright. I use it every night, and it has rubber like the Milwaukee. That's yeah, I got to get it. I got to get it. I've been I've been looking at it. I almost bought a kit just because the light was in it, honestly. The f- I almost had $400 and... on a kit just so I could have the I light. Forgot. I keep forgetting that Cobalt has a fan. I bet it's not. I, the Cobalt stuff that I've used is, uh, has been nice. Not, not blow you out of the doors, but th- it's always been nice. It works. I like Cobalt. You had some good prices on Cobalt today. I saw your uh, drink. <laughs> Dude, try the the XTR hammer drill for under seventy five bucks is a kit. Yeah, I mean, come on. I don't know. It, somebody actually complained. They're like, "Well, why don't you save this for uh, Christmas?" And I'm like, "Well, you try to find in the XTR for uh, seventy five Yeah, I appreciate bucks. it. Also, check out Tools with Souls channel, man. We uh we always hang around each other. We're always on each other's streams and stuff. It's it's a chill Thanks, thing, Mike here, man. There's there's no such thing as uh, a bad comment, dude. It's 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 your opinion. You're entitled to it. I'm not yeah. gonna, I'm not gonna get by her because that's the way you feel. I just got to do better so you don't feel that way. That's the way I look at it, man. If, if, if it's if it's actually truly a, 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 a constructive comment, I mean, fuck it. I got to do better. Yeah. Well, what comment are you talking about? Anything. Doesn't matter what oh. it is. I I don't get too worked up about any of it. No. Most of the time, I, I get a good <laughs> chuckle. The, the oh, people that, I, I've been enjoying the comments on that one video. I think it's over like 800,000 views right now, dude. Yeah. It's got like the most hate I've ever seen on a video. The, the, <laughs> the, like, someone was like, all lives don't matter. Uh, change yeah. my mind. And I gave him the suicide prevention hotline number. <laughs> I, I wasn't, I, I normally say this for the Sunday show, but I, I haven't been doing it 
so someone actually, I'm going to read the comment and I'm going to read what I said to this person, just so you all know what you're getting into. If you come to my channel and troll me, uh, this dude goes, uh, uh, it was actually Robert and I had done a, uh, the, the DeWalt DCD 999 against the, uh, I think it was the flex. Uh, it may have been, uh, it may have been the the gen the the gen four milwaukee I, I don't really remember but the guy left a comment to tell me what a son of a i was <laughs> um so he goes i didn't like that you talked so much shot he i know what he meant uh to that other guy him i was getting my ass kicked <laughs> <laughs> in the drill challenge you think you doing small tool reviews that you are better than anyone no, but okay. Uh, you couldn't last one day working with me, endurance or skill. Uh huh. I'll still watch your videos. Bit be more humble. And I was like, okay. First of all, uh, the endurance thing. Just because I am fat, I am fat because the entire front of me was cut out. Like I I'm solid. If you hit me, you feel it. <laughs> uh, like i'm a i'm a solid guy uh, i am fat though don't get me wrong i'm, I'm, fat, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read know. this one real quick south florida hoagie says what's up you guys just want to say hello real quick before calling it a night keep up the great work i look forward to seeing you more tool battles between both of you real soon thank you i don't know if we can get this guy to agree to a tool battle again <laughs> <laughs> dude the way you run a tool man you just oh dude you're just all over it and when you throw it down you're like Oh, it's like, it's like, dude, I can't compete with that. You, dude, I'm like laying on, like ah, like the whole weight on it, and 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 even when I don't put my weight on, I let the tool do the work. It's still not compared to just your capability of running a tool, dude. I've run tools for years, and I can't, dude. I can't make one run as fast as you. I just can't do it. It's all good. So my response was, uh, if you think you can, what's do up, better, Anthony? Sorry, I, I didn't mean to my the middle of my sentence to interrupt the beginning of yours. Uh, so I said to this gentleman, uh, if you think you can do better, prove it. If not, go back and unwad your little panties. Uh, that's how I respond. Uh, it was live and uh, like first reaction, but South Florida Hokie, we appreciate you being here. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of technique goes into how I run a tool. Uh, um, most people, they just like, they focus on the tool. If you watch me, I never look at the tool. Not ever. Yeah. He likes looking at the wood guys. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Um, now you gotta, no, say, I, now you gotta say it. You gotta finish reading your sentence. You gotta say, what, what, well, what do you look at? You gotta tell me. Honest to God, I don't pay any attention to the tool at all right uh what i'm what i'm paying attention to is more how i'm standing and it keeping keeping my uh shoulder in line with the tool and, and the wood grain what's your favorite part i i i, I will say this i do read wood well <laughs> like uh, i i do know how to get it not much rather swapping jobs for better pay. hey anthony now congratulations i love hearing that uh no, I, I like I said, I, a lot of a lot of what goes in. That's why, like I, I openly challenged every tool channel uh, last yeah. year. I'm like, here's a challenge. Let's see if you guys can do it. And uh, I, 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 we we had a couple of answers. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, I, I want to say that as many as nine <laughs> nine tool channels joined in, and uh, Robert here was actually the only one that got uh close to me he was like 13 seconds yeah i did the i i did the same challenge that i told everybody else to do in under five and a half seconds like i smoked it and it was literally like i i prepped the wood i knew exactly what was going on i knew what was going into it i didn't uh i like i did not uh do any pre-drilling or whatever but i sank a five eighths by 12 inch lag in five and a half seconds yeah you killed it, you killed and, it. and nobody came close and then uh the bigger channels <laughs> that had agreed to do the challenge when they saw me complete it all backed out not a single <laughs> one of them 
Don't want this smoke. That's what you said. You don't want the smoke. And, and the the best part is, I saw people like getting on platforms so they could put more of their weight on it, and I stood flat footed and just went. Yeah, yeah, we saw it. Thank you, good. great one. Hey, man, we're we're just happy you're here, and I, we're wishing you, Antonell. This one's going out to you. We wish you nothing but success, and I hope the new career works out better than you dreamed. Yeah. Hey, we got to get the heck out of here. I know. Three hours, you why, why? Why'd you do it? I, it was Logan's it, fault. It was Logan's fault. I just want you guys to know I put in a receptacle on a short. <laughs> 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 Took one minute. <laughs> Three hours later. Oh wait, look, look, we're we're ready for the next tools and tactics. Yeah, oh, there you go. There you <laughs> well, go. I'm, re I'm ready for the next tools and tactics demonstration of a tool. No. Oh. <laughs> Posture plays a big. Yeah, proper technique will make you run a tool more efficient. That's why I always get a kick out of those guys that are like, "Well, I could run circles around you." I, I, I literally beat a guy with a bower, uh, and he was using a Milwaukee, and I beat him. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I love that respect, brothers. Got to make a uh, drop a tear down that cheek. Oh man, Anthony, L. We, we really mean it. Uh, you, one of the great things about having a tool channel or any channel or any social media thing uh, that gets large is you get to meet some amazing people. I got to meet uh, Rodney Widger, who I personally meet Rodney Widger, and he's a great person. <laughs> um, but uh, and Juan Pratt's another great person. South Florida Hokie, so supportive. Uh, Antonel uh, Sai who's not even here tonight, but Sai uh, Sai, sorry, Sai Sai. Uh, another great one, but we get to meet so many people and thankful is the only word I can use to describe it. Brandon T is, is here as well. And another great person. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we've got the best community. Yeah. We, we, we could have another kind of community with a lot more followers, but we're, we, we're way better off with this community. Yeah. It, it just to, to, to get to, to, to have the pleasure to get to interact with with the folks that come onto these live streams yeah. or watch the videos, leave comments or whatever, is it's just an honor and a privilege, and it's not just saying like it's not speak. It, I actually mean it. I, I I cannot tell you how humbled I am every day that people tune in and watch and, and make comments. And yeah, I get after the trolls like no one's business, but I mean, you treat me well, I treat you well. Uh, yeah, and I I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but some people not. But <laughs> <laughs> I try. Hey, we got to get out of here. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. Uh, how many subs you got right now? What are you at? I don't know. What am I at? What are you at? Uh, what are you at? I uh, like I, I'm supposed to keep track of your stuff too, you jackass. Of course. Um, you're at your your nine seven three. And I think you passed me. I uh, don't know. Don't don't let me pass him. Make sure make sure. You uh, I'm at there. nine seven three six. Oh, there you go. There so you go. I, you're you're still passing me because I'm only getting like twenty thousand views a day. You're getting two hundred thousand. So you're cool. gonna pass we'll me in about we'll five see. seconds. So hey, I you guys are awesome. Appreciate all the support. Um, we're both gonna do something at ten thousand. You got a huge tool giveaway or something. Yeah, I got a ten tool Dewalt combo kit. I'm giving. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing, man. I'm. I'm old school. I don't. Well, let's I, just do it. This, this is gonna sound really respectful, but I don't want to buy my likes. He's not buying his likes either. That's not what it's about. There's. There's some people that literally will do a giveaway, or whatever, and 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 it is what it is. Um, I. I don't even tell him on Facebook. I don't even do Facebook, but I didn't tell anybody that I even had a channel until I hit. Until I got monetized, actually. Um. I, I just, I, you, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something for y'all. Uh, we'll, we'll get something going. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been, I, I've talked about it, it. As a matter of fact, I talked about doing a 10 tool combo kit. Um, 
when I hit 10,000, I thought, I think I started talking about that in March. Yeah. So months and months ago when I was only at like 3000. So I, but, uh, I, I had talked about it and I was like, I figured I wouldn't get there until end of the year at best. Don't buy them tactics. Just send them. That's a good idea too. That is a better idea. Actually. What's that? Don't buy the tools. Just send them. So just, just, uh, just send it to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do something. We're going to do something. <laughs> hey, uh, Rodney said, give him your bandsaw. Within a week or two at most. Um, I don't know. So I went from getting about 200,000 views a day down to 30, <clears throat> 20 to 30,000 views a day because I had an item hanging on my wall and like 70 people uh, mentioned it. And I, I've ended up like, I don't even respond to the the comments anymore. I delete it. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, you guys, uh, yeah, that home protective it, it, it device. It was a drill, though. Yeah, uh, that home protective device that shoots at uh, uh, Squirrels. Eight, 700, uh, 700 feet per second, something like that. Uh, so many people commented on it, and it just absolutely. I, I think they, it was powered by it. CO2. It wasn't even a. Uh... Not that one. Oh, I see. There All are right. th there are actually three of them in that video, but people have only found one because they're not observant or something. I don't know. That's funny. But there you go. All right, guys, we're gonna get out of here. I gotta get. We we, we need to get an hour and a half ago. I know. Yeah. But somebody took two hours to it's Logan. Logan did it. Logan's fault. It's just running conduit. Hey, appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys in the next one real soon. Thanks. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll show you how to put an array on your house. What the layout is supposed to look like. It's not ending. <laughs> it's not ending.